Howdy folks, how are we doing? It's FSG here, welcome back to Wyoming. It's been a good few months since the events that came to pass uh, way back, if you remember, at the end of Season 1. We've uh, been through a lot of change since then, so I thought I'd jump in my truck and I would give you a tour of what's happened. It's been very quiet. It's been very quiet since you know who met his demise. But I'll fill you in on all those details as we take a little drive around town. So, come and hop in. As you'll see here, we have got ourselves a new truck as well. Well, when I say new, it's pretty old. But it does the job. And it means we don't have to borrow Daryl's truck anymore as well. Which is no bad thing. So, let me fill you in on what's been going on. So... We are now in partnership with Buck Hughes, who is Jeb's brother. The guy that was missing for most of uh, the first season. Uh, presumed dead, actually. We thought maybe Jeb had knocked him off. But it turns out he'd just been away and Jeb was not lying the whole time. Uh, but I think Jeb was pretty upset as he was hoping he could get a hold of that mine and start making some money out of it. So he was duped by his brother a little bit. Um, but it's all irrelevant now, because unfortunately Jeb was found dead. Now, we do know that actually Jeb died of natural causes in the end, so there was no uh, nothing untoward, as we maybe suspected. He just was up hiking in the hills there, and he had a heart attack. So, that was the way he went out. Um, obviously, we got the post-mortem report, which told us all those details. Um... But it doesn't explain why Sandy's phone was there, and I still haven't got to the bottom of that. I do hear from Sandy every now and again, usually a nice postcard from another state. She's just doing a bit of a tour around, but she hasn't had the time yet to uh, fill me in on why she won't come back to Elk Mountain yet. Now, as you'll see in the right-hand corner there, we have got a little bit of money in the bank account now. Our little oil business is starting to make a bit of cash, which is nice. We haven't expanded it yet, but we've definitely got plans to in the future, so we'll head along and we'll have a look at that in a little bit. But first we'll head up to the mine. Now, here we are at the mine, which I am a proud par owner in with Buck. Now, Buck does tend to not get involved. He leaves us to get on with this. He'll pop in every now and again, just make sure things are running okay. He doesn't seem to want to get involved. Although he does seem to want the money out of it. Um, but he has invested some money as well, as you'll see there. We have got a couple of trucks that are running up and down to the mine. We've got the wash plant here running. And another spare truck sitting there. That's one of the haulage trucks, actually. We're bringing the equipment up. If I just park here, we'll look over the edge. And I'll give you a little bit of chat about what's going on down there. So if you look down there now, you will see we've got a high-speed conveyor um, and that big excavator that's pulled a lot of that dirt down. We have two trucks running. There's one heading up to the wash plant already as one heads down. So um, I would say it is a pretty basic operation at the moment. We'd like to expand it a bit more. Um, but as we are at the moment, it runs pretty much like clockwork. Uh, we've got a couple of good drivers down there who just do their thing, so those trucks fill up pretty quick. They empty into here. And they uh, spit out all the things that we need, concentrate and tailings, that we can sell or try and convert to gold. So as you can see here, a couple of boxes of concentrate sitting there. And the pay dirt getting reversed in. Up this ramp. So we will come back in a little while and sort some of these tailings out and get them up to the gold plant. But for now, we'll continue our tour. Now here we are heading down to Bighorn Lake, which is the piece of land that Ambrose left us. Good old Uncle Ambrose. Now if you remember, we had a couple of fields in here that we'd cut ourselves individually. Now those crops failed. And if you remember back... Uh, Earlier on, we caught Jeb one day dumping oil into the lake here. Now that got into the water table and damaged the crops. As you can see, they've returned themselves back to normal. So we have that land 
but we're not doing anything with it at the moment. And this is what I was thinking in terms of expanding our oil operation, potentially putting a second pump in a little bit further up. We know there's a, a good amount of oil in this ground, so we may go and do that. There is the stain on the ground from the oil uh, truck fire. From last time we were having trouble, but we were very quickly had that replaced. And there we go, there's our little fledgling business, the old FSG Oil Corp. Uh, and we are making some decent money, in fact I'll just jump in here. And we should be able to fill this up. There we go. Looks like there's a full load in there, and I will check the pump as well. And see what else is coming. So there you go, this has been running for a few days now. We've got 57,000 litres in there, so there's a good amount of money to come in for those as well. Uh, one of the plans we still have is to expand this operation. At the moment we just sell it off as crude oil. But there is the opportunity to uh, take it to a refinery and convert it to uh, propane and diesel. Uh, and we did talk in the last series about opening our own uh, uh, gas station, which is still on the cards. Now, something else we're very keen to do as well is purchase our own farm. After the crops failed here, I'm very keen to look at a proper farm with some good infrastructure. And at the moment, prices are pretty good. So we'll head over and I'll show you the farm that I'm thinking about purchasing. Now as we roll into Muddy Gap here, there's Clint's place. Clint's still about, he's doing his thing. Uh, we catch up with him every now and again. He's keeping himself busy. He's got his own uh, plant growing business. Um, but this is, of course, Jeb's yard. Now this has moved over to ownership by Buck, his brother, after Jeb's death. So all of this stuff here, Buck's like, if you need any of it, just grab it, help yourself. There isn't much there, but the low loader could come in handy. The truck and also the old Ford here as well. So good to know we've got those available to us. But the farm we've been looking at is just down here. So let me take you down there and show you it. So here we are. Now, those of you who watched the first season will remember this place as where we bought our old John Deere tractor. Uh, we've since spoken to the farmer who has decided that he's had enough. He wants to uh, retire and has uh, spoken to us and offered us a very good price for this. I mean, there's not much to it, right? We've got a couple of sheds. We've got uh, just a nice little storage silo there and a nice little house, but it's better than what we've got. Obviously, we've got the, the cabin in the woods as well. But it would be nice to have... It would be nice to have a second home, wouldn't it? So, um, at the moment, this is going for the princely sum of $42,124, which is well within our price range. The only issue we've got there is we don't have any land that comes with that. So we would need to look at fields as well. Now, there's this big strip here. That is worth 73,900. We've got field three there at 66. And we've got field four at 74. Now, for me, probably field four looks like a good option. It's also close to Bighorn Lake as well, across the road. So it kind of links things up. I know there's a fence there, but we could sort that and maybe go. That gives us a route one straight back to uh, uh, the oil business as well. So potentially looking at that and over time maybe buy field three as well and possibly even that one as we expand but i quite like the idea of this something uh, something to bear in mind but now we'll keep on with our little tour uh, and we'll head into town now as we roll into town i'm able to give you a little bit of an update on some of the characters that we've met along the way with this series and the first one we're going to come across is our good old friend the sheriff. There's his car. He has been very quiet since Jeb died. Um, I think he's lying low. I think he got away, basically, with some pretty bad corrupt cop work. But he, I think, was under Jeb's thumb. And uh, for that reason, I think was being manipulated as well. Of course, he's April's brother. April, who was dating Daryl. Now, there's the truck that we ended up 
purchasing for Daryl as a replacement after that terrible incident where I nearly lost my life when the brakes failed and it went over the cliff. The truck has never been recovered. The truck is still there, wedged under a rock. Uh, it was impossible to uh, uh, retrieve it, so it's still sitting there. So we still don't know if it was sabotage or just uh, a fault. But there's the truck I purchased as an apology to Daryl. Now, Daryl, unfortunately, we don't see much of anymore. Um, he's drinking a lot more. April and him have split up. April's gone to stay with her folks upstate. She's had enough. Um, so things are changing, and not for the not for the better, I would say. So um, I see him every now and again. Um, but to be honest, he's usually in such a state he probably wouldn't even remember seeing me. So there we go. Sad state of affairs there. Maybe that'll change again in the future. But the town is very much the same as it was. Everything as you saw it before. In fact, if we head along here, I think you'll see a certain old friend parked in the parking lot here. That's been sitting there for a few months as well. We've been spending a lot of our time focusing on the mine and the oil business. So logging has taken a bit of a backseat. I'm sure we'll find some uh, some use for Jeepers Creepers over the next few weeks and months. So, there you go. You are bang up to date with the characters and the goings on up here since you were last here. And I'm very pleased to say it's been pretty calm and relaxed. Nothing drastic going on at all. So, now the mine has only been running for the last couple of weeks. It did take quite a while to get the machinery up there and get that soil dug. So really we're only starting to see the benefits and uh, the initial lump of uh, product coming out of that in the next few days, which is exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to that. So what we'll do after we've sold that oil, we'll maybe head up to the mine before the end of the day and get some of that concentrate in and getting processed overnight. Right, let's switch over to this truck and we will head back towards the town. Let's bring up our HUD so you can see how much money we make when we sell this, but we can sell our crude oil here. There we go. As it drops down, the money ticks up. But straight ahead there in front of us, in fact we'll let that unload while we uh, Oh, we go over here, 12,600 in income, not bad. Now, just over the road from where we've sold our oil is the refinery. Now, what we can do in here, you can see for your 500 litres of crude oil, you get 400 litres of diesel and 100 litres of propane. Now, what we would need to do if we were to refine the oil would be to get a couple of cell points sorted. One of those being the gas station that I talked about. The other uh, is um, a trailer park that is slightly out of town but spends a lot of money on propane. So we have got potential um, customers very keen to buy those products off us so that's definitely on the list of things to do in this series. But for now we have got our work cut out. We are busy most days just making sure things run appropriately. So again, we'll reverse the truck up and get it loaded up for another run and we'll head up to the mine. Right, here we are back at the mine. We just need to pick up this trailer here and run it down and pick up those two pallets of concentrate. Here we go, there's another reversing truck. They seem to be going pretty quick with stuff. Oh, we've actually got a couple more ready. That's, that's good stuff. Right, let's get these tailings into the shed and sorted and see how much money we can make out of this gold. Here we go, four boxes on the trailer. Let's get those folded up and get them back up to the processing plant. Right, here we are. We'll just try and reverse the 
trailer in. This isn't the perfect trailer, if I'm being honest. We could do with a better trailer than this, and we'll maybe get another one sorted in the next little while. But for now, it will do the job. We're trying to keep the cost down, hence the reason I do some of this stuff, rather than paying too many people. But maybe long term, as time goes on, we might be able to uh, fund a few more people. So that's that done. It's getting on. The, the light is getting low because it is, you know, we're in November now. So let's head away from here and have a little bit of a think about the farm now. No, oh, one second. I'll just take this call. Hello, FSG. How's everything going? Hi, Buck. Yeah, no problems at all. I've actually just some run some stuff up from uh, the mine to get processed, so uh, we should see our first income come in pretty soon. Excellent. Good to hear, good to hear. Um, is there anything else you need from me? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all. What about you from me? Ah, well, actually, it's funny you ask. I need a favour, but I need you to keep it on the lowdown. Okay, that doesn't make me particularly enthusiastic, but what do you need? I don't want to talk about it on the phone. I will uh, I will head up and I will chat to you shortly. But keep this conversation to yourself. Okay. You know, I said it had been quiet for a while. I've got a funny feeling that's about to change. Now, we did say we were going to talk about the farm next. Decision has definitely been made. This farm is about to become ours. So, we're just going to go and sign some of the paperwork now. And then we will uh, head into town and get that paperwork ratified at the town hall. But, it looks like we're really properly going to set down some roots. So there we go. $42,124 we have bought ourselves a farm how exciting is that take great pleasure in taking the sign down there we go owned property by us and what we need to do we need to bring the tractor over we haven't bought a field yet we'll need to think about doing that but we'll bring a tractor over and we'll get all the stuff that we own over to here. And then we'll make a plan. But I don't think that little tractor is going to last us too much longer. So we probably need to go shopping for some more equipment as well. And I may get rid of this old rickety shed and put something else in too. Right. Next steps for us to head to Town Hall. Get the paperwork handed in. And then we officially own this house. So we'll head there right now. And then I think we'll start to move the equipment down. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Somebody's been at Jeb's place and moved vehicles around. I'm just going to check this out. I don't like it when things happen that I don't know what's going on. Let's just make sure nothing untoward going on here. What's going on here? Hello? Anyone here? Anyone here? Ah, uh, FSG. I didn't think you'd be here. I was gonna try and get this hidden. What do you mean, get this hidden? What's this? This is the thing I was telling you about. I kind of need to get this car hidden. We need to lose it somewhere. Whoa, 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 hang on a minute. Listen, I had enough trouble with your brother doing dodgy stuff. I don't want to get involved in anything I'm going to regret. Oh, no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. This is uh, purely helping out a friend. It's an insurance job. We're pretending the car is stolen so we can get the money for it. Well, I don't want to be party to anything too dodgy, but I've done worse than that before, to be honest. Fine, leave it with me. I'll lose it up near the mine somewhere. 
Excellent FSG, new account on you. Right, I need to get out of here quick. Buck, is everything alright? Buck? Buck? Oh, he's gone already. He seemed a bit flustered, didn't he? Anyway. Let's get this fired up. And lost somewhere. Why do I agree to this stuff? I really don't know. Right, we'll run this up near the mine. Actually, this low loader could come in handy for shifting my equipment about as well. So, that's no bad thing. But for starters, let's go and lose this rusty old car. Alright, I've got an idea. I'm actually going to head up to the burn ridge and lose this up there. I think if... If Buck's in trouble and somebody's going to come looking for this... We don't tend to use the burn ridge. If they think it's at the mine, that's probably a more likely place for them to come looking. He says it's for a friend, but he looked too flustered, he looked too stressed for it to be something like that. Something's going on. It could be a perfect spot down there, couldn't it? Nobody's going to come looking up here. Right. Let's reverse this down to the edge here. And just roll it off the edge here. I'm guessing he doesn't want this back. Okay, the trunk seems locked. I'm not even going to ask what's in there. Right, let's roll the car into the bushes on the edge of this little cliff here. Nobody should find this here, should they? You can't see that from the road at all. Excellent. Right. Job done. Let's get this truck back and load it up with it. Oh, tractor. Right, here we are, back at Bighorn Lake. Let us get our kit loaded up. And actually, I think we're going to dial ahead to the dealers and maybe catch up with them in the morning and find out how much money we can get for some of this. Because, like I said, I think we're in a position now where we can, one, expand the farm a little bit. We need to buy some land. But at the same time, I think we can purchase a bigger, more useful tractor. There we go. Kit loaded up. Let's head into town. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll park this at Jeb's for the night. We'll take the pickup. And we'll run that into town. Because until we've got the paperwork sorted on the farm, I don't want to move this machinery down there. That is even if I want to keep this machinery. Like I said, we'll have a chat with the, uh, the deal when we're in town as well. See if he wants to buy this back or knows anybody else who wants to buy it. So... FSG, is it done? Is it hidden? Yeah, it's hidden. Excellent. Okay. If anybody asks, you didn't see me. I wasn't there. Fuck, this is, uh... This is worrying me a little bit. Can you tell me what's going on, at least? Honestly, FSG, it's better you don't know. I'll be in touch. Oh, boy. <laughs> Got a bad feeling about this. Right, here we are, back at Jeb's. We shall grab the Suburban and we'll head into town. So the plot thickens. I do not know what Buck is up to. I should have taken a little bit more of a look around that car, shouldn't I? I wouldn't just want to lose a vehicle up in the woods there for no apparent reason. Maybe I'll go back up and have another look at it. Not now. I've got enough to do. But there must be more to the story than he's letting on. Anyway, priorities. We have just bought ourselves a farm. So wouldn't it be nice to get the paperwork sorted? And get that put to bed. 
after my first time at the town hall since I bought the mine. There you go, FSG. All the paperwork present and correct. I'll get that filed away for you. You are officially the owner of your own farm. Congratulations. Amazing. Thanks, Enid. Nice to see you again. Okay. I will leave you to do that and I'll head out. Have a good evening. Hello, FSG. Sandy. We're back. Welcome back to Elk Mountain, everyone. Yes, you got the revelation at the end of the last episode that Sandy is back. Completely out of the blue, she just shows back up. I haven't had a chance to have an in-depth chat with her yet. Uh, she was super tired, she'd been travelling for a long time, so we left her We left her to it last night, and uh, we said we'd pick up with her at some point today. Now, we've got to head back to Jeb's old place here, where we left our uh, equipment. Because, as we were going to do in the last episode, we we're going to run this down to the dealership and we're going to do some upgrades. There's a couple of things we're going to do today. We're going to purchase a field, the field um, directly opposite our new farm. The round field has got a very nice crop of soybeans in it. So rather than uh, buying a field that needs all the work doing to it, we're going to reap the benefits of having some crops already planted so that is a real positive but for now we need to I think upgrade some of our equipment to make it a little bit more fit for purpose on the new farm bigger fields and everything so all of this gear um, we may have a buyer for a collector in fact an old collector of vintage machinery who seems very interested in our stuff so um, let's head down to the dealership and see what sort of money we're going to make. I'm not holding out much hope that it's going to be a fortune. But it all helps. Now as you all also know the strange affair with Buck. About hiding that car the other day is still playing on my mind. I'm, I'm just confused as to what's going on. Again it doesn't feel like things are completely above board. Now... In the very short conversation I did have with Sandy last night, she kind of suggested to me that there is more to it uh, with Buck. Although Jeb is off the scene now, Buck is still very much a character of interest, shall we say. Um, so hopefully we'll find out a little bit more from her later on. But that car up in the woods, there's more to that than meets the eye and I need to find out what it is. All right, let's get the old tractor off here. Beautifully done. We should just park this in front of the other bits of equipment. And then we should be able to get rid of pretty much all of it straight away. Uh, the sea drill, just $190 for that. The cultivator, the Alice Jama cultivator. $1,400 for that one. Our old John Deere here. Now, 
It's only $11 to repair, so we'll do that. And it's going to give us $8,286. So that's not bad. We have got quite a lot of money in now from the oil. And the spreader, again, just pennies, really. Nothing super, super um, brilliant that will give us huge amounts of money. But like I said, the oil is starting to come in now. We are expecting a little bit of money from the gold mine in the next uh, day or so as well. So that's good. We'll keep our lime here. That will come in handy another time. But let's head in now and have a chat to the dealer because he's been looking around for us for quite a while now. He may have found us some deals. Well, that was a very interesting conversation with the dealer. He's got some nice stuff lined up for us. At the moment, we don't need anything desperately. So we're not going to pick up any equipment yet, but we are going to do something else. And I'm just going to head along here and show you what it is. Because for a while now, I've been thinking about what we do with this oil. We're uh, getting this nice oil out of the ground up at the lake in an area that I, uh, I own. But we're not doing much with it other than selling it. Now, I can take it to the refinery and get it separated into propane and uh, diesel which will give us a little bit more money. Plus, this Jeb died. There is nobody selling fuel in town, so it's going to help the local economy and maybe get me back in some people's good books. So I have been speaking to the guys at OK Used, who have been a great support for me since I got here. And they've got a plot of land next to their garage, and they were like, yeah, if you want it, you can have it, obviously, for a fee. So we're going to pick this up. We are going to spend some money. We are going to pick up this plot of land. Very reasonably priced as well. Just here, outside of town, just $3,942. So we're just going to hit the buy button on that. Obviously, we're going to have to go and sort the paperwork at City Hall. But for now, we've just bought another piece of land. And while we're here... This is the field that we were talking about as well. That is 66,380. Let me just jump back. As you can see, there's 122,000 in the bank now. So we can afford to buy that field as well and still give us a little bit of float in the bank. I also think there's more oil to sell ready back at the lake. So uh, we'll go and sort that out at some point as well. But for now, we are going to buy this piece of land. So there we go, field three is now part of our little growing empire. So we've got the land here at Bighorn Lake. We don't own the whole lake, but we've got Bighorn Lake here where our oil pump is. We've got field three, we bought farm two as well. And we own this piece of land just down here as well. So things are looking good. Now, I've already spoken to the builders. They're going to come and start work here. Hopefully in the next couple of days, everything's lined up, so we will get that sorted. But for now, let's head back to Jeb's place. Let's dump this truck, and we will go and catch up with Sandy. Hope she's had a good night's sleep, and she's ready for a chat, because I need info. So Sandy's grabbed a room in the motel where Daryl drinks, actually. Um, we haven't seen Daryl for a, a little while. Maybe we'll bump into him now, but uh, she's staying there for a few days. Just while she gets things organised. don't know how long she's going to stay, to be honest. We just need to find out what's going on. So, we will pull up here and we'll catch up with her. Hey Sandy, how did you sleep? Hey FSG, yes, good, thank you. It's um, nice to be back. Well, I'm not sure I might be saying that for too long. Yes, the amount of people that are worried about you. Um, you disappeared when Jeb died. Nobody knew where you'd gone. Everybody was very concerned for a while. People thought you were the body up on the hill. You've got to have to tell me what's going on. Holding good time, FSG, but I've got to be sure about a few things first. I don't want to tell you stuff that might tur not turn out to be right, so can you just bear with me just for a few days? Uh, I've got a lot of things I need to check out, and that's really the reason I'm here. I'm not going to stay around for long. 
it's not safe for me still. So, please bear with me. Okay, that sounds pretty serious. Um, is there nothing you can tell me? Maybe I could protect you. Like I said, FSG, when the time is right, you'll be the first person I come to. Well, I didn't get much out of her, did I? That's frustrating. And that car is still bothering me up on the ridge. Maybe I should have mentioned that to her as well. I wonder what's in it. Why did I not check that before I left it? I'm going to go back and speak to her. Hey Sandy, sorry, it's me again. I knew there was something I had to tell you. Sure, FSG, what's up? How much do you know about Buck, Jeb's brother? You know I'm in business partnership with him now. And everything's been running fine for months. We've had no issues at all. No questionable dodgy goings on. It's all been very smooth and amicable. And the other day, he came to me and asked me to get rid of a car. He said he was doing it as a favour for a friend. It was an insurance job. Something didn't quite sit with me. He asked me to lose it in the woods. Just all feels very strange. And did you do it? If it felt weird, did you do it? You know me, Sandy. Kind of got a track record of doing stupid things. So, yes, I did. Okay. That maybe changes things. Can you take me to it? I think we need to check it out. Yeah, sure I can. Actually, do you know what, Sandy? On the way up there, I might just phone Buck and see if he knows anything about it. He's been avoiding me, definitely been avoiding me. Okay, yeah, well, if we can shed some light on it, definitely it will be helpful. I have got a bit of a theory going on here. Okay, that sounds interesting. Well, let's see what he's got to say for himself, shall we? Hello, Buck speaking. Who's this? Hey, Buck, it's FSG. You seem uh, agitated. Is everything okay? Absolutely fine. How can I help you, FSG? See, this car, I just want to... Sorry to go on about it, but... What, uh... What was the deal again? Why did you have to get rid of it? Like I said, it was an insurance job. And, uh, needed to lose the car. For a claim, he's a bit short of money at the moment. Okay. Um... Is there anything in it? I didn't look in it, but, uh, um... Anything that I need to know about it that you maybe haven't told me? Listen, FSG... There isn't always a bigger story, right? You are like this with my brother. Don't start this with me, okay? Bottom line, my friend needed to get rid of that car. I helped him out. End of story. Just move on from it, man, will you? Okay, look, listen. Didn't want any trouble. That's all I want to check. That's fine by me. Okay. Speak to you soon. Well. Here we are, Sandy. I think I tucked it behind these bushes somewhere down here. Let me see if it's still here. Yes, there it is. It is still here. That is one beaten up old car. I mean, really? An insurance job? Be lucky if you get 50 bucks for that. Let's have a look inside. Okay. I mean, there is nothing inside the cabin. Watch your footing there. The boot is locked. Like, properly locked. Let me see, I might have a crowbar or something in the car. Might be able to help us with that. Uh, Sandy? I think you better come and look at this. What is it, FSG? What have you found? Um, there's a lot of money here. I'm thinking thousands of dollars. There is a forgery machine or some device for creating copies of paperwork. And then in this box here, there is tons and tons of land deeds for lots of places around the town. What, I mean, what would what would they all be doing up here? The plot thickens. The plot thickens indeed, FSG. 
and it does not surprise me one little bit. Right, close this up. Let's head back to town. I think we should pay Enid a visit in the town hall. Let's make a note of some of these uh, deeds here. Then we'll head over and see her. So FSG, you should know through a lot of my research, the Hughes brothers and their family before them even, their dad and their grandfather, always up to trouble in this town. They've been trying to own this town for years and years and years and for whatever reason they always seem to manage to mess it up but it's making them more determined than ever um, I have lots and lots of evidence if you remember back to before Jeb died the amount of times they tried to stop me from printing stuff in the paper that would uh, put them into a bad light well that just continues I continue to uncover stuff Right, we're here. Let's go and see what Enid's got to say about that paperwork. Hello, Enid. I'm hoping you can maybe help us. Of course, FSG. Anything for Ambrose's nephew. Hello, Sandy. It's nice to see you again. Thank you, Enid. You're a superstar. Now, listen. Would you give us the paperwork? Just, we're not going to take it away. We would just like to see it. Uh, for the following four places... I just have something I'd like to check out. Of course, FSG. Give me two minutes and I'll be back. No, I'm sorry, FSG. I'm struggling to find them. I've, I've looked everywhere and well, they don't appear to be here. Um, now, I've had a look at the records and I've gone and spoken to some of the other people who work here. And they say a lot of them were checked out last week. Um... So I don't know where they are at the moment, and there was no name against them when they were checked out, so I can't even tell you who's got them. Hopefully they'll be returned soon, though. Okay, thanks Enid. Um, that's very interesting indeed. We'll see you soon. Sandy, you do realise that that paperwork was what was in the boot of the car? I do, FSG. I've got a note of the names that were on that paperwork too. I've got a funny feeling that wasn't the original paperwork and that wasn't the original owner's signatures on them. But I don't know where we go from here. Well, we dropped Sandy off again. We've got some work to do. But, um, yeah, interesting stuff glad we didn't take the paperwork away. I did grab a couple of photos of it though, so we have got some evidence, but um, it just seems very interesting that either that is the original paperwork up there in that car, or it's a copy of the forgery equipment and all that money suggests that there is something rather questionable going on. I don't even know if the money was real or forged as well, so We'll just have to make our own assumptions for now. But what we're going to do now, we are going to head up here. We are going to check on the oil pump. And I think this time we will take it down to the refinery. And rather than selling it off as crude oil, we will split it into two different things. That's diesel and propane. So... Let's see how much is ready here. I'm kind of hoping there's a full truckload. There we go. A full load added again. Another 8,000 litres. That is looking good. We're getting to a point now where we... If we make a little bit more money, could start to think about employing somebody. Now, I know things are quiet for Clint at the moment. Maybe he wouldn't mind a few extra bucks driving the old truck a couple of days a week. I'm sure he'd quite like to do that. So uh, we'll maybe drop in on him on the way back and uh, see if he's up for it. FSG, it's Buck. How are you doing? 
Yeah, I'm good, Buck. Everything okay? I just wanted to check. You've not been back up to that car, have you? You've not been too nosy, have you? Just... Now it's there. Just leave it there. We don't want the police finding out it's up there and joining it back together. My friend's about to close on this insurance deal and uh, he'll be happy then. So just do me a favour. Stay away from there. No worries, Buck. I'll... Uh do that. I've got enough on my plate anyway. I'm very busy, so uh, yes. Consider the case closed. Okay. Case is closed. Don't uh, don't go up there. Just yeah, stay out of the way. It's probably the best thing to do. Right. Let's go and say hi to Clint. Hey, if it isn't FSG, how are you doing, sir? I've not seen you for a while. How's things? Things are going well, Clint. How are you? All good on the farm? Totally, man. Everything's great. Now, listen. You want to go into a little bit of a business partnership with me? You might like it. Oh, really? You don't think I'm into enough trouble with my other business partner at the moment? Oh, I'm a pussycat compared to that guy. So listen. Whoever owns the bar in town is continually hiking the prices and putting the prices up. It's really getting on the locals' nerves. So, I've set myself up a little brewing operation in the shed over there. But I could do with somebody to help me move it about and just generally distribute it. When you say brewing, Clint, what exactly do you mean? Well, I thought about beer. And then I thought, well, if you can make beer, you can make something stronger. So there's a little bit of moonshine going on at the moment. Clint, if they find you... Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. But it's okay. It's all good. The cows are in that shed too, so they're not going to want to go in because of the smell. I've thought all this through. I've got to say, Clint, I like your uh, entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, I'm... I can help you out, of course I can. On the proviso, you help me out. How do you fancy running an oil truck a couple of days a week? Sure, man. Whatever you need. To be honest, I'm welcome of all the money at the moment. It's going to keep uh, the Hughes family off my back. Oh? What do you mean? So they've been pressuring me for a while to sell the land, and I'm not interested... I love it here, but um, they start to make me offers that I'm really struggling to turn down. Well, just hold your horses, Clint. Don't do anything yet. Um, there's a few things going on which might reveal a few other things, so just sit tight at the moment. No worries. Thanks, FSG. I appreciate you looking out for me. Okay, things are getting weirder and weirder. Why do the Hughes family want to buy Clint's old farm? I mean, he doesn't even own any of the land. It literally is this plot here. Very strange. Anyway, let's get over to the refinery. Well, here we are. I would usually drop into this first place, but what we'll do... We will head over here and unload things just here so there we go let's activate this for 500 liters of crude oil we get 400 liters of diesel and 100 liters of propane so we'll let that run for a bit and uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll see what that earns us i think we'll need to get our gas station up and running first before we can sell the diesel but i do know i can sell the propane at the trailer park just out of town so that's good to know right let's get this parked up back at the farm uh, box phone calls are playing on my mind especially that second one why was he so keen for us to stay out of the way of that car up on the hill just making me want to go and check it out more so Let's uh, let's park this up. 
And as we're close, it's just up there. We could go and have a look, couldn't we? Right, that was a bonus that Clint will help us out with the driving for a bit. That eases the pressure. It means we can shift some stuff around a little bit quicker. So hopefully, the next time we see him, he'll be driving around in our truck. Right, let's head up into the hill, shall we? Right. I am determined to find out what's going on up here. It is bugging me. Oh, okay, I'm just going to keep driving like I'm supposed to be here and I'm minding my own business. There was a couple of guys standing at the back of that van there. I'm just going to keep going and hope. Don't notice me, follow me, or do anything worse. Actually, there's a ridge up here I could probably park on out of the way and see we can see what's going on I'm glad I bought my monoculars let's see if we can get the reg hmm interesting no reg number they don't want to be identified well I think I might just leave them to it but the plot thickens. The plot thickens. Welcome back to Elk Mountain. It's been a couple of days since we last saw you, and things have been moving fast. We are, in fact, on our way now to check out our new gas station, which has virtually been finished. Um, the builders have been in and made short work of it. So I've got to say a big thank you to Argsy Construction, who is one of the local builders around here, who's set it up nicely and hasn't wasted any time getting things going. Um, I'll have to uh, thank him at some point for that, but uh, it is looking good and uh, starting to build our little empire here. Uh, I need to go and see Clint as well. He says he's been working on his little uh, alcohol business, so we'll uh, check in on him in a little bit and see how he's going. But for now, as you can see, it's not that late in the day, but the sun is low in the sky. We are moving very rapidly towards winter. You can see from the trees here that uh, it's starting to turn. I can definitely feel the cold in the air. Now, if you remember at the end of the last episode, um, there was a dodgy white van up near the rusty car up in the woods. And uh, I've been unable to get a hold of Buck since to ask him about it. But... Uh, that's for another time. Like I said, we've got a little bit uh, of stuff that we need to do that's important to us at the moment. Um, I'm also going to pop into the dealership in a little minute because they have found a gem for me as well that they said I have to come and check out in a little minute now. There's Jeepers Creepers as well. That's been sitting in that parking slot for about three months now, so we need to move him at some point. But uh, at the moment, this 
is our focus. We are moving up in the world like nobody's business. Check this out. What an awesome job he's done. Got our logos on it. This is looking so, so good. Oh my goodness. I am so pleased with this. We are about to update the pumps as well. They need some work doing to them as well. Um, but this is going to be the place in town where we want everybody to come. We're going to drop our prices to make sure we're competitive. We've got a garage for lease here. I wonder if we can uh, sell that to somebody who needs it. Hang on a minute. Is that that white van? That makes me nervous. Okay. Anyway. Um, enough of that. We've got to go to the dealership now. And check out. What's in there that's so interesting? Right. Let's jump in here and see what they've got for us. How exciting. Well, 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 John at the dealership here has found us this absolute gem. He's even taken the liberty of already branding it up with our logos. Look at this absolute beauty. This is going to really set us off alongside our gas station. We are definitely moving up in the world. I am delighted he has found this for us. We have already agreed um, to lease it for now, um, purely because we can't afford to buy it yet. But I think with the amount of money that we're going to make over the next little while, that is not going to be a problem for too long. But just for $2,700, we have got ourselves a nice new tanker. So what we'll do, we'll run back to Jeb's old place. We'll pick up the truck from there. And uh, we'll come back and get this hitched up. Always a pleasure doing business with those guys. Got the same van. Turning a blind eye. I'm turning a blind eye. We've got enough on our plate at the moment. And there it is. How good does it look? How good does our logo look? How exciting. Right. And ignore that van. We're going to go and pick up the truck from Jeb's. And we're going to be back and give it a little spin. We'll probably take it down to the refinery and see how much of our oil they've managed to process yet. I'm just going to check didn't see anybody. There's nobody in that van, so where are they? That's making me really nervous. Anyway. Let's head over to Jeb's place. Right, we're heading over to Jeb's, and... You see that? Through the rear view window. Somebody tailing us. I'm just going to pull into Jeb's here. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to be threatened. He knows better than to mess with me. That has made me really nervous though. Twice in town. And then he follows me out of town. Now I did say to Sandy that I would be back in touch with her after I'd got through my uh, day's chores. And uh, we could catch up and decide what we were going to do about finding out about what happened to those deeds that we found in the back of the car and the ones that were missing from Town Hall as well. So what I'll do is I'll get organised, we'll pick up our new tanker, we'll head over to the 
refinery and uh, see how much has been refined. And we'll make a call on what we do with that. I'd quite like to maybe sell some propane um, and some diesel just to see how much money we're going to make. Well, this is a big tanker, 40,000 litres in this tanker. We haven't got even close to that yet. But it does mean we can haul a lot around quite regularly. What we'll do is we'll keep the small tanker that Clint's uh, driving now. He can shuttle that backwards and forwards as he sees fit for a few extra bucks. I know he's uh, struggling to make ends meet at the moment. Um, but I think we'll keep this for running stuff to and from the gas station and the uh, trailer park. We've got a high demand for propane. Right, so here we are. There's the diesel tank. And there are the propane tanks. All we need to do is choose what we want to put in it. We've got a thousand litres of propane already and four thousand litres of diesel in the tank. Uh, let's take the propane to start with, shall we? See what happens with that. There we go, just 2% of the truck filled up. That's okay, though. It's more of an experiment than uh, a full uh, working operation yet. Right, we will see you at the trailer park. See how much... And we may be... The trailer park's very close to Clint's. We'll maybe drop in and say hello to him on the way back. So here we are, trailer park time. Let me just roll the truck over here and see... What the going rate for propane is today? And we'll just hit the R button. LR 1000 litres. Um, we've got 32,850 in the bank at the moment. Obviously spent just over 2,700 leasing this uh, trailer. Which I do not regret for one second. Now let's see what this is worth. There we go. 1000 litres sold. $504 of income. So... Not bad. Not bad, because really that's a byproduct. We're really refining it for the diesel, because that is worth a considerable amount more than the oil. Anyway, as we're nearby, we're just going to pop in and say hello to our friend Clint. Right. He said when I got here to head over to where the bales are, he said he'd find me in the shed. I can't... I can see the roof of a small shed there. That can't be it. That's in the middle of... Oh, what have we got? Yeah. Hello, Clint. Is this... Is this the operation, is it? FSG, every millionaire has to start somewhere. I'm making gold here. Yeah, so I hear. So I hear. So, how's it going? Uh, I'm good to go, other than... I don't have any, um... ingredients. Now, I've got two choices. I can make um, aged moonshine, the good stuff. Or I can make regular moonshine. So here you go. My cousin Joe sent me all the instructions and the stills and everything. So, for moonshine, I need... A mixture of wood chips, grapes, and oats. But for premium moonshine, a little bit of barley, a little bit of corn, and some grapes. And that, uh, that makes the good stuff. Okay. Um, you realise this is Wyoming, Clint? Where are you getting grapes from? That's where... My cousin Cletus comes in. He's uh, actually waiting at the train depot just now. And uh, he's brought some supplies with him. I was going to go and pick them up, but um, I've got to milk the cows. You couldn't, um, you couldn't help me out, could you, FSG? I'd really appreciate it. I did say I would help you, didn't I? That's fine, mate. Listen, I'll go do that. And uh, you can milk the cows. And I'll bring it back later. Listen, I've got to go and finish hauling diesel, but when that's done, I will go and do it. Um, how's the truck going? Shifting the oil, by the way. Oh, man, it's going good. It's going good. Um, 
I'm trying to do maybe one run a day. Um, but let me know if you want me to do more. Good man, Clint. I appreciate it. I will see you soon. Okay. So I need to go and head over to the train depot. It's Cousin Cletus. He seems like an interesting character already. Anyway. We will go and get this diesel from the refinery. And we'll dump our first load of diesel into our very own gas station. Oh, it's not who I think it is in my rear views again, is it? What does this guy want, or guys? You're making me really nervous. Pretty much tailgating me as well. Jeez, oh. Where are they going? Let's see if they follow me. I'm going to turn here anyway. What are they up to? What do they want? Okay. Very nerve-wracking. Right, that's the trailer filled up. 10%. Um, let me see again if I can get a hold of Buck. I wonder if he knows anything about that white truck. It's making me very nervous. Hello, FSG. How can I help? Hey, Buck. Um, do you know anything about a white GMC van? Been um, spotted around town, town a few times. Um kind of feel like he's keeping an eye on me. What? I think you're paranoid, FSG. I don't know. I don't know anything about a van. And why would they be following you? Well, I headed up to um, where the car was hidden the other day. What is wrong with you? I said don't go up there. Oh, oh FSG. Seriously. Oh. Um, but I don't understand what the big deal is here. Who, who's, who's the white van? Do you know what? This call's done. I can't believe you did that, FSG. Buck. 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 Well. I get the feeling you've messed up. Well. We may have messed that up, but what we haven't messed up is the fact that we've got just over 4,000 litres of diesel here. And for the first time, and hopefully the first of many, we are going to get it loaded up at our very own gas station. And we are going to make some serious money from this. Right, let's see... How easy it is to manoeuvre this. Actually, I think we might be able to just roll it into the end here. See if we can sell things. Pop this up. Yeah, we've got our trigger there. So we can just sell this. Right. Moment of truth. Let's see what this is worth. The 4,000 litres gives us $5,300 dollars. In income. Okie dokie, that is not bad at all. Right. Things are looking up, definitely. Okay, I'm going to park this up here. Because we don't need to take it anywhere. And we will head over and meet this guy, Cletus. Now, I was going to take the Suburban today. To go and get this stuff for Clint, but actually, I think Jeb's old truck is probably better for this. A little bit more space in the back, so we'll run this down to the train depot, and we will meet up with Mr. Cletus. I think we'll take the chance while we've got a bit of time to give Sandy a quick belt check. She's okay. Also, let her know about this white van. They're looking out for me. They could be looking out for her too. 
I don't want her getting into any trouble. Hey Sandy, it's FSG. Oh hey FSG, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good. Um, listen, just be careful. I have had a white van following me around today. But I thought you might like to know just in case you're out and about. Thanks FSG, I appreciate it. Yeah, I should probably admit that uh, I went back up to the car the other night and that same white van was parked at the car spot. You said nobody knew where that was. Yeah, that's... That's what concerns me. Okay, well, you be careful. I'll do my best. Right. Now, Clint did say... Cletus had a big Chevy truck. That looks like it. And I'm guessing... Barley, grapes and some corn suggests that... This is definitely Cletus' truck. Um, but no Cletus. Oh, hang on a minute. Wow, he's a classy fella. Anyway, let's get this reversed up and then we'll go and find some help here at the mill to uh, lift it into the back for us. Well, that was a nice guy in the mill who just popped out and helped us load this into the truck. All three in there nicely. It was a good call bringing Jeb's old truck. Definitely more space in this than the Suburban. But we are done. We will uh, leave Cletus. He's not come back yet, so I'm guessing he's uh, going to be a while. So, well, maybe... Tell Clint to say thank you next time he speaks to him. Right, let's get this over to Clint's and get it sorted. Right, here we are at Clint's. Let's just roll around and maybe just reverse straight up and see if we can get this unloaded. There we go. That looks like the barley being unloaded. And there go the grapes. And hopefully, can I get close enough with the corn? Can indeed. Well, that is successful. Let's just park up over here. Hey, Clint. There's your ingredients for you. Thanks, FSG. Did you meet Cletus? Uh, n no. Not so much. No? I wonder where he was. You do not want to know. Anyway. We've got everything you need here. We're going to turn this on and see what happens. We might as well, haven't we? Okay. It's all or nothing. It is activated. Let's just watch it for a second to see. And look, the ball in the corner is ticking down. We're not going to make much here. There's only 500 litres of grapes. But, uh, hopefully... If this works, we can get some more in. Yeah, just out of interest, um, where did Cletus get all that stuff from? Uh, he just said he got it off the back of a train. I don't know why I bothered asking. <laughs> right, I'm out of here, Clint. Take care, let me know how you get on, and uh, if this works, this little experiment, I'm intrigued, if nothing else. Take care, man. Right, Jeb's truck parked up. Very handy to just have that over the road from Clint's. And now I'm going to head back into town. Enid has phoned us from the town hall. She has a little bit of news on that paperwork we were looking for the other day. So I'm going to pick Sandy up and we are going to well, pay her a visit. Right, let's just swing in here and pick Sandy up. Oh, wait a minute. Look who's here. That's the fifth time today I've seen them. That is not coincidence. 
Gotta check Sandy's okay. Oh, hi Sandy. Are you okay? Yes, FSG, I'm fine. Come on, let's leave. You seem rather keen to get out of there. You guys in the bar. They, um... Are watching me the whole time I was waiting for you. Very unsubtle. Okay, um... Well... Let's go over to Town Hall anyway. This will be safe in there. A lot of people moving around and, uh... Yeah, hopefully they won't try anything. Right. Let's go and see what Ina's got to say. Ah, hello you two. I'm glad you're here. That paperwork that you were looking for the other day. I came in this morning, and miraculously, it's all back. Yeah, I've brought it all out for you. Hmm, thanks, Enid. This is interesting. Look, here. Look, FSG. My plain farm. That belongs to Eric and Shelley Marsh. They've been there for years. So why does this land deed say H&H &H Corporation on it? I don't believe they've sold that. What's going on? Eric. Eric Marsh. I. I'm pretty sure Ambrose knew him. Maybe we should pay them a visit. Oh, I've left my notes in the truck. Hang on a minute, FSG. I'll uh, go and get them. I'll be right back. FSG, help! Help! Sandy? Wait a minute, that was Sandy shouting. I should have gone to the truck with her. I shouldn't have left her on her own. Sandy? Sandy! FSG, help! Help! If I can get after them. This thing does not go fast enough. Come on, you old... crock of... You know what? Oh. They had Sandy in the back. I knew they were up to no good. They have long gone. I have no idea where they've gone. FSG, I understand you're worried, but we can't do any more. I put the APB out, we will find them, and we will find Sandy. Yeah, you'll understand, though, with your track record and what's gone on in this town and you not clamping down on it, that I'm uh, not full of confidence. FSG, do we have to go over old ground? I told you, I was being blackmailed. I felt like I had nowhere to go. They were threatening to do stuff to April if I didn't comply, so what could I do? Listen, please just find her, before something serious happens. Hello everyone. It has been 24 hours. April was bundled into the back of that white van that we saw all day. And we don't know where she is. Nobody knows where she is. I haven't phoned 
book yet, but he's next on my list. Um, for now, we're going to head up to the mine because there's a load of gold there that hasn't been uh, picked up yet. So I'm going to have to keep working, if for nothing else, just to keep my mind off things. So we'll head up to the mine and we'll load up the gold. There's Clint in the oil truck as well. He's been doing his thing. Delivering the oil for us, which is super helpful. The things are things are happening on the work front. But I am genuinely very concerned about Sandy now. Fuck, it's FSG. Hey FSG, how's it going? You know that white van that I was talking about the other day? Yes. I'm aware of it. Well, Sandy was bundled into the back of it about 24 hours ago. We're trying to find her. I've got in touch with the sheriff. But nobody knows where she's gone. If you know anything about that van, you've got to tell me, man. Oh, FSG. I need to call you back. I can shed some more light on it, but I need to check something first. Let me speak to you very soon. Okay, so he does know something. I knew there was more to it. Why did I get involved with another Hughes brother? Right, here we are at the mine. To be honest, I'm just doing stuff to try and keep my mind off things. I've been checking my phone every now and again. Sandy's tracking's been turned off. I assume they probably got rid of the phone pretty quickly. But just on the off chance, but nothing. So, I'm just going to have to hope for the best. Before I take things into my own hands. There we go, though. Two pallets of gold. Hopefully, this will convert to some rather nice money. Get it loaded onto the trailer. We're going to get the forklift and get it loaded onto the trailer. There we go. Forklift spin will help us load that up. Let's get this down and get it sold. I need to get back to the farm as well today. We have purchased something else over the last couple of days, which has finally arrived and is being fitted. And that is a pivot to help us with our fertilization in the field. I'm going to head back to the farm and check that. We're going to check our crops too because. Um, Hopefully we can get into some farming at some point. I am considering doing a couple of contracts to keep the money topped up whilst we're waiting on our crops being ready. But uh, in the meantime, let's head down and get this. It looks like the snow is trying to start to fall as well. Which may add two things. Right, here we are back in town. We will hopefully get a good price for this move on to do some other stuff. Snow is starting to fall harder and harder though. Right here we are at the cell point. Let's roll up outside it. There we go. Sold. We have made ourselves 30,000 from those products. That is good. We'll be happy with that. Buck will obviously take his split from that, but we'll hold that for now, until we see Buck again. Now, back to the farm. So like I said, as soon as we get to the farm, we're going to check on the install of the new pivot, which Clint has kindly helped install for us. Should be good to go. Although we don't need it just now, it was something to do when the weather wasn't quite fit for farming. Um, but as you can see now with the snow falling, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. The crops aren't ready either yet, so wait until they are ripe before we can do any farming. But like I said before, maybe we take on a couple of contracts just to help top up the money. Although Clint's been running those uh, fuel trucks up to the uh, refinery for the last few days, so we should get some... Uh, good amount of uh, petrol and propane ready to uh, sell as well so 
things might be looking up on the money stakes front. Leave the truck there for now and we'll head over the road and check out the new pivot. Well, there she is. She's been tested just now. No uh, product in it yet, but you basically load the product into the middle here. And uh, it should work. Now, the disappointing bit is we don't have one that's exactly the size of this field. But um, we'll just have to make do with what we've got at the moment. It's a good solution, so we're not going to uh, we're not going to turn it down. But uh, ideally, a slightly smaller field would have been better. But what we'll do is probably reshape the size of this field to accommodate this later on, and uh, we'll deal with it that way. But it's one less job we need to worry about spending a lot of money on in terms of buying an expensive sprayer. So we'll leave this uh, to finish off its test runs and make sure it's all the right. We'll come back to this probably after we've harvested this crop and we've got a new crop in the ground um, but all looking good now how long before this snow stops now I'm standing on my porch here and I'm really trying to decide whether or not I get even more embroiled in this and go and see Eric Marsh you remember at the last if you remember at City Hall the deeds that we uncovered in the rusty car the name on them didn't match the actual owner of those deeds Eric Marsh who is actually an old friend of Ambrose so I think I want to go and see him but equally I know the more I look the deeper I'm going to get into this but maybe he'll have some answers as well. Maybe he'll know something that'll make... Maybe he'll know something that'll help us uncover where Sandy is. I'll give him a quick bell and we'll head over and see him. Hello, Eric speaking. Hello, Eric. My name's FSG. I think you knew my uncle Ambrose. Ah, yes, FSG. You're the nephew, aren't you? I did talk about you. Hello. Oh, good. Well, um, there's some strange things going on, and your name has come up a couple of times. I wondered if you'd be willing to have a chat. Strange things indeed are going on, FSG. I'd be more than happy for a chat. Why don't you come around and say hello? I'll do that. Right. Let's go and meet Eric. See what he has got to say. The snow's really coming down now. Um, what I'm going to do, actually, on the way to seeing Eric, is just drop in. It's been running the truck all day today. Just to see how we're doing in terms of uh, product at the refinery. See if there's a point at which we can start hauling some goods again. Because, to be honest, the money we've got in the bank is isn't going to last us too long unless we uh, start spending some of it on uh, new land and equipment for the farm. Right, there's Clint now. He's just dropped another load off. There we go. It's only an 8,000 litre tank, but he has dropped off quite a lot of it now. 54,000 litres in there. But that looks like it will be promising in the next few weeks. Right, let's see if we can get up to Eric's before the snow really gets bad because he is a little bit off the beaten track. Well, we don't get out east very often, but here we are. And as you can see, we've got the plains over to our right. And then the forests and the river down to our left there. And here we are. This is the marsh's place, so pop in and see them and see how they're doing. Ah, FSG. Come on in. It is cold out here. Thank you, Eric. How are you? Been better, to be honest, FSG. The lovely place you've got here. Really nice. Yes, 
something other people think too. And that's why they're trying to take it off us. Well, I did see the for sale sign outside. Yeah, what, what's happening? Well, this all goes a long way back. Let me tell you the story of the Hughes brothers and how they plan to own this entire town. Jeb has been an annoying bully in this town for years. He pressured people into selling their businesses or paying him protection money. He got a bunch of cronies he pays to go around doing his dirty work for him. Buck was the money man. He funded everything till they made some bad business deals and they lost all of their money. Jeb and Buck fell out big time. And that's when Buck disappeared. He was basically avoiding paying his bills and he skipped jail. He left Jeb high and dry. Now, there's always been a struggle over the land here between those two and your uncle. He was no angel either, but he had the town's best interests at heart. The Hughes brothers firmly believe that a lot of your uncle Ambrose's fortune is buried out in the land somewhere. And the more land that they owned, the more they can lay claim on it. And that's why they're coming after you, right? Yes, I own a lot of the high plains. I use it for my horses and the ranch. But I don't understand. If you own the land, you own the land. That's not what the paperwork says anymore. We had a break-in about a month ago, and all our paperwork was stolen. They left all our valuables, but only took paperwork. Now the paperwork at Town Hall, when I went to get new copies, doesn't have our name on it, but that of H&H Company. I don't know who that is, but I can make a pretty good guess. Listen, we're not stupid. We know it's been forged, so we're refusing to budge. The problem is we can't prove it. We've got no evidence at all. And that is not going down well with a few people. Speak of the devils, here they come again. Who are these guys? Marsh, you know the deal. We need you off this land by midnight. Or we'll remove you by force. Eric, this is a joke. They can't do this to you. Okay. Leave it with me. I'm not I'm not gonna put up with this. I'll help you out, Eric, don't you worry. This is outrageous. I don't know what to do. I need some help here. They look like they meant business though. Those are some serious trucks. Interestingly they had shovels and equipment on the back as well. It's almost like they're starting to dig looking for Ambrose's fortune. I wonder if I need to find it before them. Hey, Everest Juice, Clint. Listen, Cletus just phoned me. He uh, was collecting some more supplies from the uh, train yard. And he said there's a white van down there. Thought you might want to check it out. Are you serious, Clint? Okay, that's amazing. I'm going to head there right now. Oh my goodness. That is a breakthrough. I can't believe I'm doing the sheriff's job for him as well. Right. Let's rush over there as quickly as we can and see what we can find. It said it was over here. There it is. Let's check this out. Nothing in there, it's empty. All locked up. I don't want to touch it. I may have fingerprints on it or something like that. Interestingly, it's been abandoned. And at the train yard as well. What does that mean? Have they put her on a train and sent her somewhere else? Maybe she's not. Maybe it's nothing to do with her. Maybe they're doing deliveries or something here. Maybe there's something to do with this that... Uh, there's something to do with the wider problem. I don't know. I am... I'm baffled. Either way, I'm baffled. I need to get to the sheriff. Tell him what's going on here. Really do with him uh, coming down and checking out that van for prints and stuff. Got to 
go, go to go. Oh look, he's pulled over to the side for me there, so I can get over. Whoa, 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 what's he doing? Oh, hang on a minute, I'm on the tracks. I need to reverse. Wait, what? Totally boxed me in. What am I gonna do? They've totally boxed me in. We interrupt your scheduled viewing to bring you this breaking story. We're getting information in of a major incident in the Elk Mountain region of Wyoming. From early indications it appears there has been a collision between a train and a vehicle at one of the railroad crossings. Let's head over to Mike Davies for more on this story. Thanks Anna. Yes, as you can see behind me, there is a major operation underway here to put out the fire, but also understand what has happened here. This is a sleepy backwater town in rural Wyoming, with miles of open plains. It seems odd a car would be stuck on the railroad track at exactly the time that the one daily train passes through. We believe from local sources the vehicle that was hit was owned by an upstanding pillar of the community known locally as the farm sim guy. We have no news yet as to if he was driving the vehicle or if anyone else was involved. Witness reports also said they saw two black trucks speeding away from the scene shortly after hearing a loud crash but as yet we have no further information on that. We've reached out to the sheriff for comment, but as yet have had no word from him. Elk Mountain and the town of Clearwater has had a bad reputation recently, with the town reporting mob-style intimidation and business owners having to pay protection money to avoid vandalism and being put out of business. This incident today just adds to the worry of a town already shaken by fear. We will keep you updated of any changes to the situation in Wyoming as we get it. But this bulletin does mean there is no episode of Surviving Wyoming this week, but we hope to be back to normal scheduling next week. Coming up, why hitting Alt F4 will have you shouting legacy. And are you a real farmer if you clean your tractors? Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to Wyoming, where we are still piecing together the events of the train crash, which has shaken the town to its core. Details are still thin on the ground, and little news is coming from the crash site. But we do have one of the locals who has joined us to tell us what he saw. Cletus, can you tell us what you observed? Sure thing, Mike. And I get your autograph, by the way. Maybe a little later, Cletus. Now go on. So I was just minding my own business taking it down. That's when I heard the crash. I looked up and saw the flames and smoke. It looked pretty bad. The black trucks drove past at speed. I thought I recognized one of the guys, but I couldn't be sure. I then went to see if I could help. I saw the farm sim guy's truck upside down, but the flames weren't too bad to get very close. You say you recognized one of the drivers. I thought I did, but I can't remember where I've seen them before. You mentioned you were dumping goods at the grain silos at the depot. Do you come here a lot? Nope. I wasn't dumping goods, I was taking a dump. A what? 
you know, taking a shoot. Let's end that interview right there and throw it back to the studio. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Cletus. I think. Now we must give an apology. In a previous report, we did a piece on farmers who clean their tractors, but in that article, we used the image of a well known YouTuber by accident. This was a mistake by one of our researchers, and we apologize for any trauma this may have caused Argzy Gaming. Next time, we'll be sure to picture you next to a clean tractor, sorry for any suggestion that you drove dirty equipment. In other news, the shocking revelation that Farmer Cop is a cop. There are also strong rumors DJ Goham is actually a DJ. Whatever next. Join us after the break for more from Channel 4 News. Well, that's enough of that. I better get on with some work. I've got to run the truck for FSG today, so I best get on with that. Oh, it's a frosty one this morning. Well, I'm going to check on the moonshine before I jump in the truck. See how much we've made. Okay, that's two days in. We have 319 litres. It's going to take a while, that. Uh, Anyway, like I said, I've got to get FSG's oil down to the refinery. It's starting to do well, and I don't want to let him down. I wish I knew where he was. I hope he's okay. I've already decided I might head down to the accident site later on, see if I can find out what's going on. But the reality is, life has to go on, right? Until FSG is found, we can just hope that he's doing okay and he's not in too much trouble. Okay, here we are. I don't think there's going to be too much more. We pretty much emptied this the other day, so I think there's probably only enough for one load. But we'll get loaded up and we'll see what's left in the tank. Oh, we got 8,000 litres in the tank. And we have got another 8,000 sitting inside, so... What we'll probably do is run this one down, and then we'll maybe see what's at the refinery. And maybe pull the uh, big truck down from the gas station and get that sorted. So we're heading to town with this. We'll get it unloaded. I want to hear it from Cletus as well. He was down. He was down at the train depot when the accident happened, or he was close. I've not heard from him. I know he's bringing some more stuff into town for the moonshine, but uh, I've not heard from him yet. So I'm kind of hoping he might be able to shed us some light on things. But like I said, I don't hear from him. I'm going to head down there and see if I can find out some information for myself. Too much strange stuff going on in this town now. Okay, here we are. I forgot as well, I've got a contract to do after this. I've got to plow a field for one of the local farmers, which I said I would do. I don't really feel like it now, what with everything that's going on, but I need the money. So I'm just going to have to work away. Right, let's get this oil unloaded. Let's see how much is in here. And then we'll make a call on whether or not we need to head down, pick up the other tanker from the gas station. 20,000 litres of diesel. Okay, that's good. That's probably worth taking. That's half a tank full. Propane? Yeah, that can wait for another time. Right, let's go and get the big rig. Look how quiet this town has become. Everybody living in fear. Everybody's locked up, staying indoors. They don't want to move or do anything. They're so frightened. It's such a shame. Right, here we go. I'm going to park this on this side out of the way. Right, that's all parked up. Let's go and uh, grab the big rig and head back into town. Oh! Hey, Daryl. How are you? I haven't seen you for ages. Hey, Clint. How you going? Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? 
New truck? It's nice. Yeah, it's not mine. It's nice, but it's not mine. I've just borrowed it off a friend for a couple of hours to, to run a few errands. Um, I'll give it back after that. Remind me, Daryl, what happened between you and FSG? You were you were thick as thieves, and uh, now you don't see each other at all. That's a long story, man. You know, after the incident with the truck and everything that went on, I just wanted to distance myself from him. He, he just seemed to attract trouble. I just kept myself to myself. Oh well, it's good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well, and I will see you again soon. Oh, it's great to see Daryl again. He has not been uh, around a lot at all recently. He's properly kept himself to himself. So good to see him back out and about. I think splitting up with April hit him hard, and uh, now she's shacked up with her new man, Scott. She's uh, she's moved on definitely, and I'm not sure he has, so it's nice to see him uh, out and about again and getting some work and getting things done. Pleased to see. Anyway, I'm going to push on. We've got to get this uh, diesel back to the gas station. Do anything we can to help FSG out at the moment. Right, here we are. Let's just get this reversed up and loaded up as quickly as we can. FSG said last time he was here, he um, drove in, but made it kind of difficult to get out, so we'll reverse in this time. See how far we get. I think I might need to draw forward again here and line myself up. A big... Uh, Big trailer on this. That'll do. There we go. Could be quite a nice payday for him. Right, we're all loaded up. Let's head out of here. Back to the gas station. We'll see you there. Let's get the town back to normal a little bit, actually, after the accident. The, um, the press were crawling all over the town, and I think it caused more hassle than it did good. Um, these people are... People are happy just getting on with their lives here. They don't like to be the focus of attention. And certainly, some of the... Some of the more dodgy characters did not enjoy having the press around. Uh, Channel 4 News are still hanging around, though. I think they think there's, uh... A bigger story here, under the surface, and they'd probably be right. Get it unloaded, tanker unloads pretty quick, which is nice. There we go, twenty-six thousand dollars. He'll be pleased with that when he comes back, which I'm absolutely sure he's going to do. But that's us done. I'm going to grab a quick burger, I'm going to run the gas truck, or the oil truck back, and I'm going to go and head and do that contract that I promised the farmer next door I would do, and then I am going to head over to the accident site and see if I can find out what's going on. Okay, here we are, it's the only contract we've got at the moment, because it's the depths of winter, other than the transport ones, which I can't do because I don't have the product. Oh, it's a little a little ploughing job for Richard Miller here. It's actually the field behind the farm here. So uh, a nice easy one for me. We're going to borrow the equipment that we need to do this. But again, this will give uh, FSG a little bit more money in his pocket. So he'll appreciate that. So we're going to borrow these items. And they should be delivered straight away. Oh, there's our tractor. And there's our plough. And it's this field here. So... Let's jump into it and get it sorted.
Well, there we go. Job done. There's another nice little earner. Now, I said I was going to try and head up to where the incident had happened over there by the sawmill. You can see the smoke has died down now, so they must have put the fire out. But uh, I need to find out some news about FSG. I'm starting to get worried now. A whole day since the incident. Still no news. Well, let's jump in the truck. Let's head over there and see what we can find out. Right, let's head down here and see how close we can get. Yeah. As I suspected. Probably not the only person who's coming down here to check out things. I don't understand why they've maybe blocked it off. Keep prying eyes away. But I know my way around here better than them. I'm going to head out. And we'll go at it from the other side. Maybe you get into the train depot the other way. So... Let's go on a little bit of a road trip round Elk Mountain. So if you head out past the oil refinery and down this back road, we should be able to sneak in. I'm pretty sure they're focusing all their efforts on the main entry in there. They probably haven't thought about this yet. As I suspected, nobody watching the roads down here I'm just going to park up pretty close and stay on this side of the road. I'm going to cross over and see what's happening. Let's leave this here. How good the sheriff's here. We'll have a word with him. Clint. Clint. What are you doing here? Come back from there. Come back. Hey, sheriff. The not knowing was killing me. I had to come and check what was going on down here. Well, you know you can't be here. There's so much stuff going on, and it's not safe. I only just put out the fire. Well, can you tell me anything? It was... Is, is FSD alive? Listen, all we know is that we got to the truck. There doesn't appear to be a body in there. So you hear he's got out and run off, or... Something else has happened. We we have no clue yet, but we're working on it. You've just got to let us get on with it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm just concerned like everybody else is. But it seems strange, right? This is... The single crossing. There's nothing either side of it that would have stopped him on the track. And... He could have got out if he had time. So something, something's not right. Something is not right. Then, you know as well as I do that I can't tell you anything about what's going on until we have more information. Those uh, Channel 4 news guys are hounding me as well. I'm trying to ignore them as much as possible. But, I'll try and work out what's going on, and then people will know. Now, you're going to have to leave. Okay, okay, I'm gone. I'm out of here. But let me know if you hear anything. Also, it was a waste of time. The sheriff, right? It's always a waste of shine and time when it comes to the sheriff. Right. Let's head home. Only option we've got is to play the waiting game. Hey, Clint, it's Cletus. Hey, Cletus. What's going on, buddy? Did you see me on the TV? The news guys interviewed me. <laughs> yeah, I saw you on the TV. Not your finest moment. Anyway, I wasn't 100% truthful with them when I said I didn't know anything about the black trucks. I followed them. I know where they went.
Okay, Cletus. Are you sure that we're going to the right place? I'm telling you, Clint, they're at the animal dealer in the shed at the back. I followed them there. Well, if you're right, we might be able to find out what's happened to FSG. And Sandy. Right, Cletus. Northern Stockyards. Where did you say they were? They're in the shed round the back. The one that's been abandoned for a few years. Okay, well... I'm gonna park up here. We're gonna need to walk around. I don't want to disturb anybody. Right, Cletus. Come on, let's go. I'm a coming. Oh, shh. You've got to keep your voice down. Can't let them hear us. Now, where's Clint? Cletus, shh. Say nothing. Don't say anything. No worries. Cletus. Hey, there's one of the trucks. That's the other one there as well. This is clearly where they are. Doesn't seem to be anybody about. Can't hear anything. Cletus, you still here? Be quiet. The engines are still warm. Been parked here very recently. Let's, uh... Let's see what we can find out. I'm telling you, Sandy, this is getting <clears throat> out of control. I don't know what to do. I never saw it going this far. Will you calm down? Listen, this is all part of the plan. The more we frighten the community, we frighten everybody, the more likely they are to sell up, to leave, and means we can own more of the town. Yeah, but FSG was my friend. And I know I've not spoken to him a lot recently. But man, I kidnapped him. That's a big deal. Did you kidnap him, though, or did you save him from a train wreck? I think you go with the second one. You got him out of there and got him safe. No, I'm not sure the sheriff would say it like that. Listen, FSG was nothing more than a troublemaker. He was getting in the way of everything. So, it's better that we keep him for a little while until we sort things out. Are you not concerned those Channel 4 news people are going to be all over this? No, they haven't got a clue. Neither's the sheriff. Everything's fine. What? What was that? Did you hear that? Damn it, Cletus. I told you to be quiet. Come on, we better go. That was nothing. Just probably one of the cows with a bit too much methane in it. Come on, we've got to make a few more plans. Latest, come on, we're leaving. What have I just heard? Sandy. Is in on this. Not so innocent after all. That's scary. I never saw that one. Right. No sign of FSG either. We need to work out where he is. But that was too close. We needed to get out of there. Cletus, what is wrong with you, man? I don't know. Too many beans again, maybe. Oh, morning. That was a long night. Dropped Cletus off and uh, went to my bed about 4am. And, uh, yeah, didn't get much sleep after what I discovered last night. Sandy, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Anyway, still no sign of FSG. I am going to drive by his farm this morning, just to make sure everything's okay there, because... I want to make sure that uh, when he gets back, everything is as he left it. I'm going to have to do some oil runs as well today. I've done nothing for the last 24 hours. 
Right, let's head over to the farm and see what's what over there. Okay, here's FSG's farm. Oh man, it looks like it's soybeans already. That's interesting. Let's just check the farm, make sure all is above board. But I wonder if we can help him out by sorting out those soybeans. And he didn't buy any equipment yet, did he? He was hoping to do that with some of the money from the oil. I can't spend his money really, can I? Those soybeans need to come off. I wonder what I can do. Oh, I know. We can always have a poke around Jeb's old yard. Let's see if there's anything we can use there. I know that International Harvester tractor is still there. So, that's a start of a 10. Yeah, we need to rescue them. Can't let those go to waste. There's some good, uh, good money in those for him. Right, let's go and see if there's anything in all of the scrap at Muddy Gap. I am still reeling that Sandy is in on this. Everybody thought she'd been kidnapped. But it was just a trick to get her off the, off the radar for a little while. Honestly, I can't believe it. Nobody's going to believe me if I speak to them. I'm just going to have to keep it to myself for now. The sheriff probably in on it too. Right. What have we got here that we can use? Nothing really. Oh, well, there's an old combine harvester here. I don't think that's going to go anywhere anytime soon. That is destroyed. Old truck bed there. No engine on it. Old elevator. Is it? What's this? What's this? What's this? Looks pretty beat up. But it's a harvester. That has seen better days. But we can get that working. It's a small harvester, but it might just do the trick. And an old trailer too. Man, this couldn't be better if we, we wanted it to be. Right, I know where the keys for that tractor are. Let me grab those. I think we might have to tow that combine somewhere though. I don't see that moving. Right, got the keys. Let's give this a go. Just think, we're back to this tractor. This is the one that caused FSG so much hassle when he first arrived here. This is what triggered the uh, animosity with Jeb. And look where we are now. Scary. I think I might be giving Cletus a call as well. He can help with this. Trying to get this fired up. Got to play around with a few things. See if we can get it started. No joy as yet, but... Oh, we nearly went then. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes! We've got it going. This really is a hunk of junk, I'm surprised. It's not going to fall, fall apart in my hands. Some of these levers and stuff are just going to break off. There's so much rust on them. But this is running. I reckon we give it a go. Let's get this down to the farm. See what we can do with it. really could do with a, a bigger header it is not a small field
Okay. The moment of truth. Let's power this up. And see what happens. It looks like everything's running. That's a positive start. Let's drop the header down. And see what happens. We are combining. I can't believe it. That's amazing. Right, Cletus is on his way down with the truck. Let's push on with this. Right. I put Cletus in the combine. He's been driving combines up this way for years, so he should be totally fine with that. And I am hauling the grain cart, or, or whatever this monstrosity <laughs> I'm pulling behind me is called. But uh, it's going to take us a while to do this. It's a big field, and uh, it's a small header. So let's see how we get on. Well, it was all going so well, but unfortunately we've snapped a chain. So we are going to have to head into town and get a new chain or some parts from somewhere. I'm not sure how many people are going to stock parts for this, but hopefully it's a standard sized chain and we can uh, get up and running again very soon. So I'm going to jump in the truck, head into town and uh, hopefully be back as quickly as we can to get this sorted. Alright, we're just leaving the main dealer. They didn't have anything of the sort we like, but I reckon the guys okay used will. They've got a lot of uh, old equipment and old kit. They'll know exactly what we're doing with this chain. So let's head along and we'll pick that up and see what they've got to say. 
should get us back up and running very quickly. Here we go. And what's that? One of our friends in the black trucks. Well, I'm not going to take this opportunity to not confront them. See what they've got to say for themselves. Oh, classy number plate too. Very nice. Nobody in it. Let's go into the shop. Hello, Daryl. See you still in that truck. There's FSG, Daryl. Hmm? Yeah, I know it's terrible, isn't it? Hopefully they'll find him soon. No, no. <laughs> Where's FSG, Daryl? Um, I told you, Clint. I... I don't know where he is. So, you wouldn't necessarily have kidnapped him and be keeping him somewhere out of the way, would you? Well, um... <laughs> uh, listen, Clint, you better be careful what you're saying, actually. Yeah, you're probably right. Um... I don't know what I'm talking about, do I? Maybe I'll get more out of Sandy. Oh no, she's been kidnapped too, hasn't she? That's right. What are you saying, Clint? What do you know? Oh, uh, you know, Daryl. I don't know much. I'm just a simple guy getting on with his uh, work. I'll see you later. Ah, oh, that made him feel awkward, didn't it? Right, let's see if we can get a chain. Success! We have got the parts we needed. So, let's head back to the field and get this work done. Right, I think we're all good now. I think that's that sorted. We'll soon find out when we roll under here. Bingo! We have success. Right, back to it. We've got a lot of the field still to go. We've made good progress on this field. We're nearly finished. Uh, what it has done is given me time to think, though. You know, I'm thinking about going back to the cattle yards later, trying to have another look for FSG, but maybe without Cletus this time. 
is not the most tactful. That's us done here. Let's just fill this last trailer and get it unloaded. Hey, Clint. Do you want to go and have another look for the farm sim guy? You know what, Cletus? Let's stay out of it. You go home. It's been a long day, mate. Okay, no problem. Right. Let's see if we can solve this little mystery of where FSG is. Hopefully, nobody's around and we can uncover some secrets. Nobody here. Good. Let me just check around the side. Oh, we're safe. Okay. Let's get in here and see what's going on. An RV? And the blinds are down. What is this doing here? We try the door. Nope. It's locked. It's definitely locked. FSG? Is that you? I'm going to have to smash this door open. Let me see if there's some tools somewhere. FSG, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just, they've had me in here for days. What's going on? I've me blindfolded. I don't even know who who's holding me captive. Oh boy, do I have a lot to catch you up on. Right, we better leave. Quickly. Oh, what are these lights? Oh crap, they found us. FSG run. Oh, I wish I'd cleaned this windscreen. Right. We've got a problem on our hands, FSG. I can see them in the mirrors. Let's get out of here. FSG, they're still following us. What? I'm gonna drop you off at Eric Marsh's place. You're gonna to have to bail out at speed. But we can do this. We can do this. We'll make the turn and they will shoot past, hopefully. Okay, Clint, if you're sure. Alright, get ready. Go, go, go. I'll bail into the ditch. Bail into the ditch. Oh, there they go. I hope Clint's going to be okay. Well, Clint said to head over to Eric Marsh's and he would know what to do. 
so let's go see him. FSG, it's so good to see you looking well. People were very concerned about you. Eric, how are you doing? Um, Clint said I should come see you. Yeah, he told me what he was going to do and he said uh, to be on standby because he may need to kind of put you somewhere out of the way. Yeah, seems that way, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so uh, what's the plan? I think I'll stick you in one of the sheds tonight. It's a warm night, so you won't get cold, but uh, less likelihood of them snooping around there if they come to the house. Nope, oh, fair enough. Let's do that then. Oh, Clint's going to be alright. Well, morning everyone. Hope you're all doing okay. Oh, it was actually a good night's sleep. And uh, tell you what, Eric throws up a good breakfast. But here's Clint. He did phone ahead and say he was uh, making his way back, so... I don't know how, but he's shaking those two trucks. That's quite impressive. Clint. Can't thank you enough for last night, mate. Uh, it's all good, buddy. I just needed to, uh, to make sure that you were okay. Um, what happened with the trucks? I just shook them off. I mean, Daryl knows these roads like the back of his hand. But I know these roads like the back of the back of the back of his hand. Okay, well... Like I said, can't thank you enough, man. Listen, you couldn't run me back to uh, my cabin, could you? I think I need to freshen up. I've been in these clothes for ages. Yeah, I need to really think about what we're going to do next. This is starting to get kind of big, isn't it? Sure is. It sure is. Yeah, for sure, man. Jumping. Honestly, Clint, I can't thank you enough for all the work you've done on the farm as well. Will you uh, say thanks to Cletus too? Maybe he'd... Uh Maybe like a little present or something. Should I give him uh, like a, a year's supply of baked beans? I know he loves them. FSG, the last thing Cletus needs is a year's supply of baked beans. They nearly foiled our uh, snooping around the shed, amongst other things. And the upholstery in my truck's never going to be the same again. There you go, man. Rest easy. Thank you, Clint. You're a good friend. I'll catch you later. Ah, uh, home sweet home. Time for a rest, I think. We've reached out to the sheriff for comment, but as yet have had no word from him. Jeez, this has got big, hasn't it? In the town of Clearwater has had a bad That's interesting. These Channel 4 guys have really caught on to this. They could come in handy. Knowing what we know now, this could, uh, this could definitely play in our favour. Anyway, I want to know what's happening with Buck. He has been incredibly quiet the last few days. Let's give him a bell and see what he's got to say for himself. Yeah, this is Buck. Buck's FSG. What the hell is going on, man? Buck? Buck? Buck, ah, he's hung up on me. As soon as he knew it was me, he hung up. Talk about guilt. Right. I'm going to get showered. I'm going to get cleaned up. Uh, Clint's on his way back. I'm going to head to the farm and see what we can do there. Clint, I appreciate the lift, mate. Thank you. You're doing too much. It really is appreciated. Uh, no worries, FSG. Just glad to have you back, man. But let's get down to the farm. I need to walk you through what we've done, what equipment we've got, and uh, what needs to do next. No, that's awesome. No, really looking forward to getting back to some sort of normality for a while. I'm slightly worried, though. Those trucks are going to come back, aren't they? Oh, you bet they are. With the... Uh more rage than they had before as well. Yeah, that's what I'm concerned about. I tried to phone uh, Buck just there as well. He knows what's going on. He just doesn't want to admit it or be a part of it, I think. We'll track him down, though. Listen, FSG, I've got a little bit behind on the oil deliveries as well. Uh, so I apologise for that, but with everything that's going on, it's uh, been a bit of a distraction. So what 
I might do is uh, get you to drop me off at the uh, at the oil derrick because the truck's parked there. I'll run a few uh, oil runs and uh, I'll let you go back to the farm. How does that sound? No, nope, perfect. Let's kill two birds with one stone, right? Well, I am exhausted. I'm trying to get my head around what's going on here. Um, maybe just getting our head into a little bit of uh, farming might just take our mind off things for a little while. But uh, so many things going on in my head. But I think this is this is coming to a head soon. I think too many people involved. The press are all over it. There's gonna be some findings from that accident. And uh, yeah. I'm without a truck again. Can you believe it? Seems to be a bit of a habit I'm forming here. Oh, well, there's my combine that Clint mentioned. That <laughs> looks great. Look at that. The old farm all is back as well. That thing caused us so much hassle at the start, didn't it? And now look at it. Back where it belongs. Looking as good as ever. So, Clint said we've got a nice amount of soybeans in these silos. We're going to just wait for the price to be a little better for those. Um, but I'm going to invest in some more modern machinery, I think. What we need is a good plough for this field and a more of a workhorse tractor. That farm all's great, but really uh, not really powerful enough for what we need now. Um, so we are going to treat ourselves. I've phoned ahead to the dealership. We're going to lease to buy some equipment because... To be honest, we don't have that much money yet. I think we're sitting on about $90,000. Although a lot more to come from the oil. That's about to uh, take off in a big way. And uh, so we will, I think, head straight down there now and go and pick those up. So like I said before, um, we've released these. It's cost us about $5,000 for the tractor and about 3000 for the cultivator. But um, hopefully... If we keep them for long enough and the funds come in we'll be able to uh, buy them out right because to be honest i think this is a tractor we are going to keep for a while and there we go the good old dealership has got them out and ready for us already so i am looking forward to this it's great having old kit something a little bit more modern is really gonna get us started so there it is look at that 8410 looking absolutely fantastic we've got a rather nice wide cultivator too now this uh, needs 250 horsepower to run i think we've got about 264 in here so we should be all right but uh, all we can do is give it a go right let's get back to the farm Right, here we are. I think we just jump straight into the field and get on with it, don't we? This tractor is so nice. We'll have to move the combine off the field, but other than that, we are good to go. It's nice to be doing some farming again and forgetting about all those other worries we've got.
Well, that's a good job. Well done. That was really good fun. I love this tractor already. So we're just going to drop this at the farm. Clint has phoned. He said he's done a few runs with the oil tank. He said there's tons of oil still left there. So rather than putting it all in the refinery, I might just sell some direct. Prices are good and uh, means we can double up, really. Uh, when the uh, petrol is ready, we can... Wait a minute. What's going on here? This can't be good. This can never be good when the sheriff's here. Let's see what he's got to say for himself. Hello, Sheriff. How can I help you? Hello, FSG. We're obviously following up on the last few days' incidents, and uh, Clint had mentioned that he had found you. Wondering why he didn't come and see us. Really? After your history? Listen, I understand. That's why I brought the feds with me as well. We are looking into this in a lot of detail now. Um, I've been duped as well. And I think you have. So, let's just get to the bottom of this. Can you tell us everything you know? And we can take it from there. Fine. Okay. But if anything comes out, or I get into trouble again, I know where the leak has come from. Well, there they go. Hopefully, I've not just given away all my secrets. We'll wait and see. Right, as Clint said, there's quite a lot of oil still sitting. So we're going to go and grab the big rig from town. And we are going to get that unloaded. Maybe go and sell some fuel too. We'll see how much is in the uh, refinery. Right, here we are. Let's grab this and go and get a load of oil. I think there might even be a full tanker load. Which could be quite lucrative. Right, we're nearly there. Now, my plan is... Knowing how much oil we're getting out of this... Is to maybe put a second pump in and really start to up our uh, income. We need a bit of money for that, though. So, uh... We'll see what we make from this oil, but it could be that we plough it straight back into uh, a second oil pump because there's definitely a requirement for uh, making the most of this while we can. Right, let's see how much is in the tank. The uh, loading pipes are on the other side. Hopefully we'll be able to load this up, but uh, 74,000 litres still left. After Clint's done his run. It's been a few days, so uh, that is interesting. Right, let's get it filled up. We are going to take a full tanker of this. I'm going to check the prices too. Now, having just had a look at the prices, actually the train to Cheyenne is the uh, best price, but only by a few dollars. And let's be honest, we're not getting into the uh, train depot at the moment with everything that's been going on. Um, it's still penned off by the police doing investigations and there is car parts and train parts all over the place so uh, the next best one is actually the oil depot which is next to the refinery so actually ideal to be honest uh, they're wanting just over $1,500 per thousand litres so not a bad price maybe not the best but uh, with the amount of oil we've got we shouldn't turn it down so let's head over there we'll get this sold and we'll pick up whatever gas is in the um, in the refinery as well and we'll take that to our, our gas station and sell that as well and see what it does for our finances. But um going to be in the money by the end of uh, today, I think. Right, here we go. Like I said, the refinery is the second building, but just in front of it here is the oil sell and distribution point. So we can do a direct sell here. And just get the cash straight away for this. Let's see what this is going to bring in. There we go. Still half a tank just empty now. And we are absolutely way up on our money. 140,000, 61,500 in income there. That is insane. And that's only the half of it. 
let's fill this up with uh, gas for the for the gas station as well. We're not finished yet. But if ever you wanted justification that that second pump should go in, that's it. Forty-six thousand of diesel here as well. Now I think the price is much of a muchness, but we'll soon find out. But this is uh, this is really turning us around. This is turning our hopes and prospects around big time. Now there was sixteen thousand liters of propane there as well. We're going to leave that until that's a full tanker load as well, and uh, weight as well. That's a little bit of a bonus actually, to be honest. But this is really going to change our fortunes. Right, we will see you at the gas station. So I've done my best today to ignore the new findings that Sandy was always pulling the wool over my eyes and Daryl as well. I can't believe it. Two of the people I trusted the most stabbed me in the back, so I don't know where to go from here, really. I don't really know who to trust. The only person that's been really decent with me is Clint. So I would hate it if he turned his back on me as well. So hopefully that's not going to happen. But you never know in this town, right? Right, let's see if we can get this unloaded. There we go. Trigger kicked in already there, but we might as well reverse this in neatly. If we can. Here we go. Pull forward and get the unload trigger and we are good to go. Let's watch this money tick up again. Right, coming up to the end of the tank. 50,000, so in fact, uh, gas is selling for less than crude oil straight at the moment, so that's interesting. We'll uh, consider what we do with that. Uh, next time we've got a full tanker load, we'll check the prices. But still, 191,000 in the bank now. We have enough to buy a second oil pump, which really starts to make things interesting. Hey Clint, how's things going? FSG, you need to come down here straight away. Yeah, sure man, okay. Uh, is everything alright? Yeah, you'll see when you get here. They said take it as a warning, FSG. Did you recognise the voice? No. They're not stupid enough to use their own voices, I think they use one of their henchmen. But, uh, there was some good moonshine there, man. I'm gutted. I know, Clint, but listen, don't worry. The net is closing in on them now.
Oh, Clint, I'm sorry, man. I know you love that moonshine. Yeah, it sucks, FSG. I say we go find them. Show them what we're really made of. Well, thanks to the fire brigade, it's under control now. At least you can rest easy, it's not going to spread to the rest of the farm. Clint, it's a poor effort by Sandy and Daryl to keep us quiet, but we're going to have to do more than that. We don't scare that easily. Damn right, FSG. We're going to have to do a whole heap worse than that. Well, there you go, the fire brigade. I'm glad they put that out. That saved us uh, a job by trying to do it on our own. So, we'll say goodbye to them. And we will get on with the day. There's stuff to do on the farm. I really I need to take my mind off this. Where could they be? They've got to be close by. To be able to do stuff like that, they've got to be close by. We've just got to work out where they are. Right. Clint's gone for an oil run. I'm back on the farm. We've still got work to do. I'm going to go pick up a little cedar that we found. And it's down at the dealership. So I'm going to go and pick that up just now, and we are going to get on with some work, because I don't even want to think about the other things that are going on at the moment. So we'll take our new, rather nice tractor down to the dealership, and we will collect stuff. We've got the uh, cops keeping an eye on us at the moment. They want to make sure that uh, Sandy and Daryl don't come back. They are public enemy number one at the moment. They are wanted by the law big time. So they can't move without the cops jumping on them, which is great. So I, for once, I feel looked after by the local law enforcement up here, which is good. What? Buck is phoning me? Buck, you have got a lot of explaining to do. You better talk right now. FSG, listen, I need your help. <laughs> I don't believe you, Buck. Honestly. Why would I help you? FSG, I am being blackmailed. Please, can you help me? Sorry, Buck. Don't believe you. Listen, the game's up, man. I know what's going on. I know about Sandy. I know about Daryl. It's time to come clean. The net is closing in. Sorry, what? Oh, come on, man. You've been working with them for ages. I know what you're up to. They've asked you to hide the car with all the forgery stuff in. You've been scaring the townsfolk to get them to sell up so you can buy all the land. FSG, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, man. Pull the other one. No, seriously, FSG, I, uh... I've been meaning to explain to you for days, but I've been being blackmailed and I... I didn't want to tell you until I found out a bit more information. I promise I don't know what's going on. I promise I don't know anything about what... Who, Sandy and Daryl, how are they involved in this? Seriously, Buck? Are you going to pull that one on me? Listen. I can't speak right now. I'm too busy. But uh, I'll maybe speak to you later. I'm sorry, I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. Come on, you knew about the white van and everything. FSG, I swear I didn't. Listen back to our old calls. I was as confused as you were. Whatever, Buck. I'll speak to you later. Right, here we are. There is, somewhere here, a little cedar for us to collect to take back to the farm. Who just popped into the shop? There it is! Kinsey 3600 planter. Not the newest, but uh, nice wide width. Nine metres. That'll get us going for a while. And it'll take only 150 horsepower to run. So that is great. We're going to take this from the shop now. We're going to fill it with seed. And uh, we are going to go planting. We're going to put some corn in, I think. Because uh, after losing Clint's moonshine, we're going to have to find another avenue. And I think we might make some beer. Anyway, we're going to lease to buy this again. I know we've got uh, some decent money in the bank now. But uh, that is going to get invested in a new oil pump. So we don't want to spend too much of it. And there she is. 
looking resplendent. Right. Let's get this hooked up. Let's buy some seed while we're here. And let's head back to the farm with it. Who's that guy? Looks familiar. Anyway. We are going to head back. I think we'll just throw this straight to the field and get stuck into some stuff. My head is buzzing with everything that's going on. I would love to find out where Sandy and Daryl are hiding. I want to bring them to justice big time now. I really, really do. But we have no idea to find them where they are. And you know what this place is like. Just wilderness for miles, so... They could literally be anywhere. So, in the meantime, let's get our heads down and actually do some farming. Right, let's get things hooked up and running and we will kick back, turn the radio on for a bit, just chill out. Like I said, we are going for some maze. That is us on our last pass. That has not taken too long at all. I tell you what, a 9 meter planter makes all of the difference. And this Kinsey's run really, really nicely. So, we will get this finished. We will get this back to the farm. Now, this does need quite a bit of work still. There's uh, weeds on this. It needs liming and it needs rolling. So, we have got stuff that we still need to do to it. But... That's another tick in the box. A lovely planted field of corn there. And to be honest, give me a couple of hours to get my head away from all the shenanigans and goings on. So, there's something in that as well. So, let's get this folded up. And uh, let us go and see how progression is going on our new oil pump because that is in the midst of getting installed. It could well be finished by now, actually. So we'll head over there shortly and have a look at it. Hey, you Clint. Thanks for the lift, mate. Appreciate it. No worries, Alpha Street. I've done the oil runs. Things were looking good, and I think you're going to be pretty pleased when you see the new oil pump. They've already finished it. Oh, exciting stuff. I'm really getting excited. The amount that we can produce is going to be uh, it's going to be crazy. We're going to be making some serious money now, aren't we? Right? Absolutely, my friend. No, nope. things are looking up. 
So like the first one we bought, this is second hand again, but uh, there are a lot of uh, old mining equipment around uh, Wyoming, so we've picked ourselves up another deal. It cost us just $60,000, so as you can see there, we still have a hundred and thirty in the bank, and here it is. You'll notice it's on the old site where we uh, used to keep the tractors when we had the fields up here, but... It is now a new oil pump, and look at that. Doesn't even bother to get the signs up. That's amazing, buddy. Well, you know what? If you're going to do a job, you do it properly, right? Yes, indeed. They look awesome. Look at that. Brilliant. Now, I guess all we have left to do is to turn it on. It's already running. But let's see what it can do. There we go, crude oil pump number two. Let's activate it for the first time, and hopefully it won't be too long before it's making money. In fact, there's our first litre of oil working straight away. That is awesome. Let's run over here and check the other one while we're here. Still 35,000 litres in here as well, and that's after Clint's done a couple of runs, so... Wow. We are going to be rolling in it. Right. All done here. Clint has actually suggested hitting the bar. He says Cletus is already up there. He says, why don't we go and celebrate the fact that the new pump is in, the farm work is done, and to be honest, we've not heard anything from Sandy or Daryl, or Buck for that matter, for the last little while, so maybe things are settling down. You can only hope. Here we go. Let's go for a beer or two. I believe we're drinking back here. This was going to be our sell point for our uh, moonshine. But that's gone up in smoke. Hey, Cletus, how you doing? Evening, Cletus. What's happening? Not much. Just a bear and a bowl of refried beans. Oh, boy. So, guys, come on. Where could they be hiding? They have to be close, right? Somebody's turned up at Clint's yard and set fire to the moonshine stills. So... It's not like they've left the state or done a runner to avoid getting captured. They're still hanging around here because, because let's be honest, their plan is to take over the town. They, they've got this far. They're not going to quit now, are they? Yeah, I've been thinking, and you know what you said to me about uh, Buck as well. Um, that seemed odd, didn't it? Do you believe him? Well, I wasn't expecting it, but um, no, I don't believe him. I don't believe anything he says, if I'm being honest. Cletus, really? Well, sorry, fellas. It must be the beer. Yeah. It's the beer, Cletus. So, yeah, if, there's, if there was only some way we could find out where they were, I mean, I, I don't know where we would start. I mean, if we were to scour this land, we would be here for months. I mean, the, the amount of open prairie land we've got up here would just... It would, be, it would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yeah, I know. We really don't have a solution at all. I think we just have to hopefully wait until uh, they mess up and uh, we either see them or they're picked up by the uh, feds or the sheriff or whoever. Well, why don't we just triangulate the points between their cell phones and the cell phone towers, check this against their GPS location based on their last calls and find them that way. Give me a map. If I do this, then this. Well, then this. Put a line here, and another here, and another here, and X marks the spot. Whoa, Cletus, where did that come from? Didn't you know I'm an MIT graduate? Jeez, oh. You learn something new every day, don't you? Well, if that's where they are... Shall we wait for it to get dark and we'll go find them? 
I'm up for that if you guys are. Well, you can stay and have a few more beers, Cletus. You've nearly blown our cover once. Actually, FSG, um, there's something Clint and I would like to show you if you've got time. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Just come with us. Jump in the truck. I'll take a little drive. Where are we headed, guys? Oh, well, don't worry. We'll be there in just a couple of seconds. We're not going far. Let's come over here, FSG. Open the right-hand garage door. What's going on, guys? What is going on? What is this? Is this what I think it is? Well, the guys at OK used here um, headed up into the hills and they retrieved Daryl's old smashed up truck that went off the cliff and they've restored it back well, not to its former glory but even better and do you know what? because he got the insurance money for it we've decided to give it to you FSG just, you know don't wreck this one I I don't know what to say guys amazing Elk Mountain. We have just checked the oil pumps. They are running well and we're going to need to go and collect some oil for them later on. But uh, we are just taking a run now down to the town to see the guys. We've got a uh, bit of a plan. Now we know where Daryl and Sandy are, thanks to Cletus's rather uh, impressive uh, calculations using the uh, cell phone towers and their, their last known locations of the GPS of their phone. We uh, we need to make a bit of a plan now. So I've agreed with uh, both Clint and Cletus that we're going to head down, just have a word with the sheriff, tell him what we know. I think he uh, is in the mood to help us. So, we will see you in town. Well, I've got to say, I am loving the new truck. It is awesome. All right, let's go see the sheriff. Hey, hang on a minute. Sheriff's got a new uh, car. Look at that. City of Elm Creek. Ah, uh, they cl clearly didn't stretch to a brand new one. He's had to buy it second hand. Anyway, let's go see him. Ah, Clint, Cletus, you're already here. Morning, FSG. How are you doing? Morning, Sheriff. Howdy, FSG. So, I've been hearing from the guys. You know where Sandy and Daryl are. Well, if Cletus' uh, calculations are right, I believe we do. I think the next step is to probably go down there and uh, see if we can see them. Listen, FSG, don't do anything stupid. 
We need to bring them in, but we don't have enough evidence to prove that they've done this stuff yet. So don't go wading in there and spoiling this investigation. I am going to get the state troopers up here and get us a little bit of backup. Can you hold on in the meantime? Uh, Sheriff, uh, we need to go and make sure they're there, though, right? It would be crazy. Let me go. Let me go on my own. I will be stealth-like. I will not cause a scene. They won't even know I'm there. I'm just going to go and check to make sure they're there. Hey, listen, I can't stop you, but uh, you know the repercussions if you mess up this investigation. Yeah, yeah. No, of course I do. Of course I do. FSG, I've chatted to Eric Marsh. Um, go and stop by his farm on the way. There's a bit of an idea there. There's no point in driving straight up to them. They'll hear you coming from miles off. So, he's got a bit of an idea. I've got a bit of an idea to FSG. You take this. Thank you, Cletus. That's very helpful. Right, I'm going to leave you guys to it. I will report back as soon as I can. And I've got a full day's worth of farming to do, so I'm not going to be too long. Okay, we're heading up to Eric's now. Um, sounds like Cletus has phoned ahead and made a couple of plans, and this little uh, package from Cletus is going to come in very handy too. Hello, Buck. What do you need this time? Hey, FSG. Have you given any more thought to what I said the other day? Listen, I really need you to believe I have nothing to do with any of this. I promise you I'm being blackmailed. This isn't a joke. I'm not trying to blow all over your eyes. You've got to help me. Listen, I've decided I'm going to sell my half of the mine. I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to be a part of this town. Just too stressful. Too much stuff going on. Too much water under the bridge. Oh, I'm going to sell up and leave. Now I'll give you first refusal on my half of the mine, but I need a buyer soon. But I wanted to let you know. You're, you're kidding me. But what will I do? I don't have the money to buy the, the other half of the mine. It's going to start making some good money soon. There's a lot of gold up there now. I'm sorry, FSG. I've just had enough. Wow. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Buck, I kind of thought, was uh, quite the hard man, but he's uh, shying away from everything here. What will I do? I I don't know what to do about that gold mine. I don't know what to do about anything, to be honest. I think the first thing we need to do is get Sandy and Daryl sorted. They are our biggest problem at the moment, so... Uh, we'll come back to Buck, and we'll come back to the mine in a little while. But uh, selling it? Wow. I did not see that one coming. Here we are, Eric's. Let's see what he's got to say for himself. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Ah, oh, hello, FSG. Yes, come with me. I spoke to Clint. He's, uh, let me know what you're going to try and plan to do. And I kind of thought the best way to get off over the plains there is not in a vehicle, but by horse. So I'm going to give you my, uh, my thoroughbred here. We take her for a ride across the, uh, plains. You know where you're going. It'll make much less sound than a vehicle. You'll be in good hands. Eric, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for this. Right. I've got a rough idea of where we need to go. I'm just going to have to uh, work it out. But we're definitely heading down this way somewhere. Okay, we've been going for quite a while now, but I think we're close. I can see uh, a quarry just over there, and I think they're over to the right-hand side. Okay, there's a tree line down there. I'm going to stay quite far away from it. I'm going to uh, leave the horse over here somewhere. I'm sure they're down there somewhere, but I'm not going to get any closer. And I will show you why. So, in my pack here... Thank you to Cletus. 
I have got this state-of-the-art drone with a camera on it. So we're going to send that up and we're going to see what he can see. And hopefully not get ourselves discovered. Right, can we go? Okay. That's right. That's left. That's forward. Right, let's see what we can find. Definitely said they were... Oh, wait a minute. Look at that. Spotted them already. Right, I'm going to go a little bit higher here. And avoid them as much as we can. But that is definitely the two trucks. I've got a tent. Camper vans out here too. Very helpful. So, let me get my bearings here. Because we're going to give this footage to the state troopers and the sheriff. He will know how to come and get them. So, they're on the second tree line. Keeping out of everybody's way, because they know they are in deep you-know-what. Right. I think we've got all we need. Let's get out of here. Whoa! Okay, they've spotted the drone. Right, let's get out of here. Before we lose it, I don't think Cleese would thank me. I destroyed his rather expensive drone. the drone packed away. They're going to be chasing where that drone's come from, so we better get out of here. But that's perfect. All the information we need. Right, we're back at Eric's. Let's grab the truck and let's give the sheriff a call to head back into town. Sheriff, you are not going to believe they're exactly where Cletus said they would be. The two trucks are there, the uh, the RV's there, and there's a tent there, so they're obviously sleeping out there and camping out there. That's great news, FSG. I'm getting the state troopers organised as we speak. I should be here shortly. If we can get that footage dropped off, that's the evidence we need to know where they are. I think we've got them, FSG. This could be the end of things. Well, here's hoping, Sheriff. I had a long chat with uh, Buck this morning. He's uh, he's selling up and he's moving away. He wants to get rid of the gold mine. Really? He's still on my person of interest list. Yeah, I think he uh, may be on a few other people's person of interest lists too. I'm beginning to think he's not involved. FSG, that's the state police just arrived. I'll call you later. Right, I need to get my foot down now. I'm going to drop this uh, footage off. I need to come past the dealership, but I'm going to do that in a tractor, because he's got a new vehicle for us. Alright, let's get the seed run coupled. And let's go and get our new pieces of equipment. Well, first piece of equipment, hopefully, and the second piece of equipment. Because we've got a dry fertiliser spreader, but one that will take lime as well. Because the field needs lime, it needs fertiliser, and it needs rolling. So... We're going to see how many of those we can get done in the next short while. Right, here we are. We are just going to head around here, go and speak to the dealer, who's going to bring the equipment round for us. So bear with us, we will be back shortly. So there it is, for just four and a half thousand dollars, a thousand litre dry fertiliser spreader, which does take lime as well. So we're going to get a lime delivery at the farm too. Um, again, this has been shipped in from overseas, but it's perfect for what we need. So we'll get this sorted and uh, we will see you shortly. As you can see there, our lime has been delivered. Six big bags of it. So that should keep us going for sure. So we're going to start getting loaded up and we are going to get on with this job. Right, we are going. Now, the nice thing with this is 24 metres wide, so we should get round the field relatively quickly. Unfortunately, 
we are going to eat through a lot of lime in the process. There we go. One load done already. So let's go back and fill it up again. I think you might have to be patient with us on this one. Right, here we are, back again. And we're just going to keep going. Well, folks, that was um, pretty hard work. It does not take a lot of lime in this uh, spreader. And you know how much you get through lime quickly. A couple of patches on the field, but I'm not going to worry too much about them. Let's see if we can get this little last uh, piece here. If we can, that's awesome. And then I think we'll move straight on to fertilising. To this is a good job. Well done. Please, we've got this done. And there we go, a little gap there, but I'm okay with that. Right, straight into the fertilising. Okay, our solid fertiliser delivery has arrived, so we can push straight on. That's awesome news. So we'll get this done quickly. And then we'll wait and see what the sheriff wants us to do next. There we go, filling up with the dry fertiliser. I am kind of hoping that we get a little bit of a broader distribution now with this than we did with the lime. You know how much lime uh, you need to use on fields. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a better solution with the fertiliser, but still needs to be done. So let's get into here and let's get it done. Here we go, the last couple of passes, and we are done with the fertilising as well. This hasn't taken much time at all with this big wide 24 metre width. It's really got through the work fast. So we'll pack up here, and then uh, we will wait for the call from the sheriff. FSG, state police are here. We're going to roll out in the next 30 minutes or so. But hopefully, we'll be here in time. Thank you, Sheriff. I'm just finishing up the work for the day, so I will be with you. There we go, folks. That was the call that we were expecting. Now, they have said they are going to wait till dusk before heading over. We'll go and position ourselves down at uh, Eric Marsh's place, ready to roll out as soon as things get a little bit darker. Finally, we might just be getting to the end of all of this trouble we've had up here. FSG, it's Buck. They've called me again. 
They're threatening me. They're saying if I don't sell the mine right away, some pretty bad things are going to happen. Well, just sit tight, Buck, because we're about to uh, get involved in something that may bring all this down. So just sit tight, will you? By the way, do you know and recognise who it is? No. They appear to be using some sort of voice changer. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I'll speak to you soon, Buck. I'm going to head up to the mine and start sorting a few things out. I've had enough of this. Okay, Buck. Don't do anything silly. Um, hopefully we can resolve this pretty soon. Right. State troopers are here. Looks like we've got some backup. So... Let's head over to Eric's. Okay, FSG, we're going to head out now. Um, you can ride in the helicopter. But I want to stay safe. No problem, Sheriff. I think the same shortly, sir. Mr. Mavis Street. There's nobody here. Wait, Sheriff. Buck called me just before we left. He said he was heading up to the mine to sort some things out. He was in on this all the time. favor but i need you to keep it on the lowdown i kind of need to get this car hidden nobody should find this here should they hello fsg sandy you said he was doing it as a favor for a friend it was an insurance job that maybe changes things can you take me to it i think we need to check it out um there's a lot of money here i'm thinking thousands of dollars there is a forgery machine or some device for creating copies of paperwork and then in this box here there is tons and tons of land deeds for lots of places around the town oh Okay, I'm just going to keep driving like I'm supposed to be here and I'm minding my own business. There's a couple of guys standing at the back of that van there. Hmm, interesting. No reg number. They don't want to be identified. What does this guy want, or guys? You're making me really nervous. Just be careful, I have had a white van following me around today, but I thought you might like to know, just in case. Sandy? Sandy! MSG, help! Help! They have long gone. We 
need you off this land by midnight, or we'll remove you by force. Listen, Cletus just phoned me. He uh, was collecting some more supplies from the uh, train yard. And he said there's a white van down there. I thought you might want to check it out. I need to get to the sheriff, tell him what's going on here. Really do with him uh, coming down and checking out that van for prints and stuff. Whoa, 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 what's he doing? Oh, hang on a minute, I'm on the tracks. I need to reverse. Wait, what? What am I going to do? They've totally boxed me in. We interrupt your scheduled viewing to bring you this breaking story. We're getting information in of a major incident in the Elk Mountain region of Wyoming. From early indications, it appears there has been a collision between a train and a vehicle at one of the railroad crossings. We believe from local sources the vehicle that was hit was owned by an upstanding pillar of the community known locally as the Farm Sim Guy. We have no news yet as to if he was driving the vehicle or if anyone else was involved. So I was just minding my own business taking it down. That's when I heard the crash. I then went to see if I could help. I saw the Farm Sim Guy's truck upside down, but the flames weren't too bad to get very close. Well, can you tell me anything? It was... Is, is FSG alive? Listen, all we know is that we got to the truck. There doesn't appear to be a body in there. Daryl, will you calm down? Listen, this is all part of the plan. But man, I kidnapped him. That's a big deal. An RV? FSG? Is that you? I'm going to have to smash this door open. Hey Clint, how's things going? FSG, you need to come down here straight away. I'm gutted. I know, Clint. But listen, don't worry. The net is closing in on them now. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we just triangulate the points between their cell phones and the cell phone towers? Check this against their GPS location based on their last calls and find them that way. Give me a map. If I do this, then this. Well, and then this. Put a line here. And another here. And another here. And X marks the spot. I'm sure they're down there somewhere, but I'm not going to get any closer. And I will show you why. But that is definitely the two trucks. I've got a tent. Camper vans out here too. That's great news, FSG. I'm getting the state troopers organised as we speak. I should be here shortly. We can get that footage dropped off. That's the evidence we need to know where they are. Okay, FSG, we're going to head out now. Um, you can ride in the helicopter. Where is Mr. Mavis Street? There's nobody here. Wait. Sheriff, Pop called me just before we left. He said he was heading up to the mine to sort some things out. FSG, let's roll out. We're going to head up to the mine. Right, FSG, get in. We'll head this way. Right, FSG, we're going to get there up there as quickly as we can. 
quite going to see what's going on. But wait a minute, they're slowing down. Why are they slowing down? It's Arxy. What's Arxy doing here? Should we stop, Sheriff? No, you guys keep going. We'll deal with this. Radio me when you get there. Good evening, Ox. What's going on? Ah, Sheriff, am I pleased to see you. I was just finishing up work over there at the gravel mine. I heard this almighty crash, and there's an RV down at the bottom of the ravine. By the time I got there, I couldn't see anyone trapped, or anyone in the water. I went over to the other side to see if I could see anything, but nothing over there either. But, there were a couple of black 4x4s that took off when they saw me coming. They were hanging around at the water's edge for a bit, but then they were gone. I'm sorry, I didn't catch their registrations. I was too worried they were going to hit a couple of the sheep. It's all good, Ox. Um, thank you for letting us know. We're uh, on the case of something here at the moment, so uh, we will report back when we know a little bit more. Oh, and Sheriff, while I've got you, next time I'm in town, I need to pop into the station and file a report. I spotted some dirty tractors in a field last week. Honestly, it is a disgrace. No problem, Ox. Whatever you want. I swear, I'm sick of that guy wasting police time. Right. Let's head over to the mine and see what we can find. State police to sheriff. Go ahead, guys. The place is deserted. There's nobody here. They've been here, there's tire tracks. But they've gone now. Roger that. Damn it, I can't believe we've missed them again. I'm sorry, FSG. I thought we had them. No worries, sheriff. I'm not sure there's much more we could have done. We'll get them though. I can guarantee you of that. There goes the sheriff. Had the decency to drop me off. He's really atoning for past errors. Really felt like he was on our side tonight. Well. Off to bed it is. Busy day tomorrow. Well, good morning everyone. Hope you slept well. I did not, thinking about everything that went on last night. But we've got a day of farming to do. And we have got a lot of weeds in our corn. So I'm going to run down to the shop. They have got a weeder that we're going to borrow from them down there for a couple of days. And lease that off them. And we're going to get that field looking really good in time for harvest. We want to maximise that yield as much as we can. So... We will drop off the little fertiliser spreader here and we will see you at the shop. Oh, there's the sheriff. Let's just pull in and have a chat with him. See how he's doing. Howdy, sheriff. How's it going? Hey, FSG. Everything alright today? Yeah, I just want to say thank you for all the efforts last night. It's not how we wanted it to turn out, but um, them's the brakes, I guess. Don't you worry, FSG. State police are absolutely picking their way through everything in the area. They'll find them. They'll know where they've gone and what they're doing, and we'll get them. What about you? What are your plans now? You know that Buck is uh, part of that uh, crew. Well, I don't want to see the gold mine go into disrepair. I'm still part owner of it, and I'm guessing he's not going to have any claim on it now if he's going to be going down for a long time for uh, everything that he's done. So uh, I'm going to try and make a bit of money out of the gold mine. Well, you might as well. Um, like you said, there's money there. It needs to be made. And your oil business is doing well as well, I hear. Yeah, things are starting to turn a corner. Um, in fact, I might head up to the mine later with uh, Clint and Cletus. And we'll uh, fire up all the machinery again and start shifting some dirt. Good for you, FSG. Well, if you hear anything from Buck... Or any of the others, let me know straight away. I will do, Sheriff. And thank you, again. I appreciate it. Well, like I said, it feels like a different person these days. Right, let's pick up our piece of equipment and we will head back to the farm. There it is. Um, this is a hoe. 9 metres width, so we should get through the field pretty quickly. 
Like I said, this is on lease, so uh, we can hand it back as soon as we're done with it. Not something we want lying around the farm. So we will take that for a few days, and then we will bring it back. Right, there it is. Let's jump in here, get it hooked up. We'll get this field done as quickly as we can. And here we are. As you can see, the weeds are patchy. Not everywhere, but it's better to get them now than uh, waiting. Right, let's get this unfolded and let's get the job done. We're doing really well here, but um, I'm just trying to think. I I'm going to get Clint and Cletus to head up to the mine and start firing up some of the machinery up there. I need to get things moving up there again. Um, I'll maybe do his oil run today to help him out. So let me just give him a bell and see uh, what he's up to. Hey, FSG, how's it going, man? Yeah, Clint, everything going right? As well as can be expected. Listen, um, do you and uh, Cletus fancy heading up to the mine? Um, we've kind of had the green light from the sheriff that we can just get stuck in up there and we don't need to worry about uh, Buck or anything like that. Um, we still own that mine, so uh, it's ours to do what we want with. Yeah, no, I'd be more than happy to. Let's do that. I'll uh, give you a call later and let you know how we've got Thank you, man. I appreciate it. That's Clint and Cletus sorted. They'll go and sort some stuff up at the mine. I've got quite a busy day, actually. When I'm done here, I need to do a couple of oil runs, but I also need to head to Town Hall. The sheriff called me before as well and told me all the paperwork that was confirmed as forgeries has now been removed from Town Hall, and the originals that we found in the back of the rusty car have all been placed back at the Town Hall. So I need to, because actually the deeds for this farm and also for the gold mine were forgeries, so I've got to go and ratify that I'm happy that the original deeds are now there at Town Hall. So I need to go and see Enid as well this afternoon. So we have got a busy, busy day ahead of us. But we'll push on, we'll get this finished, and uh, we'll move on to the next job. Right, here we are. We have got just this last little bit here, so I am going to push on. I'm going to get this done. We can get this folded up back into the yard. And I'll go and get my truck, which is still all the way up at Eric's, after we went up there with the cops last night. So, um, 
just finish off this little bit and just looking back over here this is turning into a rather nice crop of corn I'm very excited to see what sort of money we can make from this later on in the year and there we go everything done let's raise this up get it all folded drop it off at the farm right we've got the truck back we're heading back into town now hopefully it won't take us long to load up the oil I do know we've got about 50,000 litres in pump one and I think there's a I would say maybe half a tank load in uh, the refinery that we can drop off at the gas station gives a bit more cash in the bank so all good all good there's actually quite a lot of propane now as well so maybe we could sell a little bit of that obviously it doesn't make this kind of money that uh, the diesel fuel does but uh, we'll take it right first things first let's head over to the oil pumps back up at the old farm we shall uh, get this tanker loaded up and we will head back now I'm not sure which of the pumps is I think it might be the new one we'll soon find out pretty sure we unloaded the older pump last time round let's just jump out check here okay so it's not this one this has got 12,000 litres in it but actually 12,000 litres is worth loading up so I'm going to take this one as well there we go loading on this one and then we'll skip to the next one right let's get this rolled back close enough to hook everything up does mean we're going to leave some in this tank actually which is okay as long as the tank is full we're in a good place right there we go as you can see there we're coming up to the tanker being full it's going to leave us why a lot still in this tank actually There you go, 21,000 litres. There's another half a tank load in that in that pump already, which is good. We are making some decent money. 40,000 litres in this tanker. And we'll run this down to the refinery. Right, here we are unloading now. Actually, at the moment, crude oil is more expensive uh, if you just sold it directly as crude oil. We make 1,200... Uh, dollars per thousand litres of diesel but we're making fourteen hundred dollars if we sell it as crude oil but the kicker is propane is six hundred dollars a litre as well so if you add the two of them together uh, separate uh, constituent parts that you can make from the crude oil are worth more so what we're going to do we'll fill up with propane first we'll run that down to the propane cell point at the trailer park and then we'll come back and grab the diesel afterwards. Right, here we are just off the sawmill road, heading down towards where I had my terrible accident with the train. But just in here, there is a rather nice little trailer park where some of the local workers live. And we've got a cell point here to get through a lot of propane <laughs> with their barbies. Right, watch that tick up. There you go, 10,000. Not bad, we'll take that. We'll take that, and then when we add it with the diesel, we are going to make a pretty penny. Right, here we are, full of diesel. 29,000 litres of it, to be precise. This should be quite a nice payday. Well, let's see what we can get for this it's actually getting quite late in the day uh, Enid said she would hold on for me so as soon as we've done this we need to head to Town Hall which is right here right here we are let's get on loading there we go all done a 35,000 
444 load. I am happy with that. Wow, we okay. Up to 155,000 in the bank. Not bad at all for a day's work. Now, if we can fire up that uh, gold mine, we are going to be literally sitting on a gold mine. Right. Let's go and see Enid. She has very kindly waited all day for me. So we'll go and sort this paperwork out. It's been a good day. Oh, Cletus, man. Come on. Oh, my truck's stinking out. Control yourself, man. Oh, I'm sorry, Clint. I had beans for breakfast. Right, here we are. Wow, I forgot how big this place was. Okay, I'm going to drop you off down at the trucks, Cletus. Let's get those fired up. And the excavator. And the belts. And then... We'll head back up and fire up the uh, smelting equipment. I don't think I need you near a naked flame for any longer than uh, is necessary. Right, I'll see you in a little bit, Cletus. Give me a shout if you need anything. I'll fire up the smelting equipment. I must remember to give FSG a call and let him know all that's looking good up here. Right. Spill some tailings in the wash plant there. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Buck? Oh, Clint, thank goodness it's you. I was up here yesterday sorting stuff. I said, to, I phoned, even phoned FSG and told it. I said to him, um, anyway, when I was up here, guess who turns up? Sandy and Daryl. Yeah, there's a pretty big manhunt out for you at the moment. We know what you're up to. We know what the three of you have been doing. No, Clint. I swear, that's why I'm here. I had to hide. They've been after me, too. They're the people that have been blackmailing me. You're being blackmailed. Everybody thinks you're in on this. I swear, Clint, if I was in on this, I wouldn't be here now hiding. I would be away with them. What seems to be going on? Ah, oh, Cletus. Somebody else. Please, guys, you've got to believe me. Cletus Buck says he's nothing to do with it. He's been hiding up here all night. Which is fair, because we didn't know where he was. So, I'm beginning to believe him. Hang on a minute. I can hear engines. Well, well, well. If it's not FSG's little cronies. You know the game is up, Sandy. It's a matter of time before you're caught. Shut up, Clint. You don't know what you're talking about. We're going to leave the state. They won't be able to find us. We've got plans. Big plans. So you just had to pick up the third member of your crew, are you? Oh, this pathetic old man. He's nothing to do with us. He's uh, He's been taking a lot of the heat from us recently, so... We appreciate it for that, but... No, no... He's going to go to jail, and uh, we're going to get away with it. Simple as that. Wait, so the accident with FSG, that was you. The fire at mine, with the moonshine, that was you. We had our suspicions, but... Yeah, it was us. The whole thing was us. The forgeries, trying to take FSG out. Getting rid of your moonshine, that was just a warning, that was just a threat. But... Yeah. Everything we tried just didn't seem to go right. But we're ahead of the game now. Why are you doing this, Sandy? Daryl, what have you got again? Don't you see, Buck? You're the problem. You never knew about the affair that Jeb had. And the two children that he had. This is our land. We rightfully own this. But you came back with your money and your opportunity and you took it off us we just want back what's rightfully ours what? you're Jeb's kids? that's right Buck you're not going to be a problem for us any longer 
Wait a minute. Can you smell something? No, not you, Cletus. Seriously, though, can you smell something? Then, Cletus, sorry you have to be collateral damage, but you know too much. We're out of here. What did they mean by collateral damage? I'm worried now. Is that smell? Oh my god, they've torched the forest. We need to get out of here. We're nearly done here, FSG. Thanks for your patience. No problem at all, Enid. Thank you for your help. Oh, hang on a second. Let me just take this message. It's from Cletus. A, v a voice recording. This pathetic old man. He's nothing to do with us. He's uh, He's been taking a lot of the heat from us recently, so we appreciate it for that. But no, no. He's going to go to jail. And uh, we're going to get away with it. Simple as that. You're not going to be a problem for us. Any longer. Enid, I've got to go. Oh my goodness. We've got all the evidence we need. And they're up at the mine. I need to get a hold of the sheriff. Gotta get this to the sheriff as quickly as possible. Wait a minute. What's going on? Where are these guys going? Sheriff, you've got to listen to this. We've got everything we need. I'm sorry, FSG. We're in the middle of something quite serious now. There's a big fire up at the mine. Wait a minute. That's where Cletus and Clint are. And they've just sent me this voice recording. You've got to listen to it. Yeah, it was us. The whole thing was us. State troopers, this is the sheriff. Can I dispatch up to the mine straight away? Two black 4x4s up there, heading back down into the valley. It's our guys. What do we do now? Just give him a few minutes. It's going to be dangerous up there. Then we'll head up. You can come with me. FSG, when we get there, I need you to just stay out of the way. We have got this under control. Do you understand me? Do not get involved. On Grande. There you go, FSG. It's all over. Finally, Sheriff. Finally. Where are Clint and Daryl? Does anybody know where Clint and Daryl are? FSG. State troopers told me that the fire brigade said the fire's too intense to get up there. They also said Sandy and Daryl said they left them there to burn. I'm sorry, ma'am, we can't get to them. You need to stay back, son. Nobody could survive in there. Cletus? Clint? Buck? Did anyone order barbecue?
Well, it's just another ordinary Saturday here in Wyoming. Business is going well, and we've had no trouble with anybody in the last few months, which is great. Even the press have left now, and we're back to a normal town. So, I guess it leaves me nothing to do but to bid you a fond of farewell from here in Elk Mountain, Wyoming. Who knows what the future holds? Excuse me. Hello, FSG. Bet you didn't expect to ever see me again. <laughs>